This is the July 8th, 2020 Land Use Commission meeting, and it is being held using interactive conference technology, linking video conference participants and other individuals, including interested members of the public via a Zoom internet conferencing program. We're doing this in order to comply with state and county official operational directives during the current pandemic. Members of the public are viewing the meeting either via the Zoom webinar platform and or a YouTube streaming video. For meeting participants, please be aware that unlike in-person meetings where a court reporter can easily indicate that she cannot hear or ask for a repeat, in these meetings it is more difficult for her to do this. So I'd like to stress for everyone the importance of speaking slowly, clearly, directly into your microphone, and in addition, before speaking, you please state your name for the record. Also, please be aware for all meeting participants that you are being recorded and the digital record of the Zoom meeting um, will be held and your continued participation as your implied consent to be part of the public record for this event. If you do not wish to be part of the public record, you should exit the meeting. The Zoom conferencing technology allows the parties and each participating commissioner individual remote access to the meeting proceedings being via our personal digital devices. So please also note that due to matters entirely outside any of our individual's control, occasional, occasionally there will be disruptions to connectivity that may occur for one or more members of the meeting at any given time. If such disruptions occur, please let us know and please also offer us your patience as we try to restore the audio visual signals so we can effectively conduct business during this pandemic. My name is Jonathan Lee K.K. Scheuer. I'm the current LUC chair, along with commissioners Axon, Chang, Okuda, and Wong, LUC executive officer Daniel Ordenker, LUC chief planner Scott Derrickson, um, our administrative officer Riley Hakoda, our Deputy Attorney General, Linda Chow, and our court reporter, Jean McManus, we are all on Oahu. Commissioner Cabral is on Hawaii Island, Commissioner Ohigashi is on Maui, and Commissioner Giovanni is on Kauai. We currently have eight seated commissioners out of nine possible. We, prior to the start of the recorded portion of this meeting, confirmed that all of our commissioners can hear and be heard. Our first order of business is adoption of the July, June 9th and 10th, 2020 minutes. Um, Mr. Derrickson, is there any public testimony that's been received on these minutes? No. Okay. Um, are there any comments or corrections on the minutes from the commissioners? If not, may I have a motion to adopt? Hi, this is Nancy. Um, I will make a motion to adopt. If somebody just did, then I will second that motion. Um, I believe Mr. Wong, were you trying to make a motion? I'll second Commissioner Cabral. <laughs> okay, a motion has been made to adopt the minutes from June 9th and 10th by Commissioner Cabral, seconded by Commissioner Wong. Is there any discussion? If not, um, if you haven't been with us since we've been doing this online, I'm asking for roll call votes for all votes. Mr. Ordenker. Unmute. You're muted, Mr. Ordenker. Uh, Commissioner Cabral. Yes. Commissioner Wong. Aye. Commissioner Exxon. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Ohigashi. Aye. Commissioner Chang. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner um, Giovanni. I abstain. Commissioner, let me see. Oh, Commissioner Okuda. Yes. Chair Stroyer. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, and sorry, just as part of the record, I believe today our deputy assigned deputy attorney general is Mr. Morris. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you for making that correction. This is Daniel Morris, deputy attorney general. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Our next order of business on the agenda was the adoption of the June 24th and 25 minutes. However, the LUC staff have informed me that those minutes are not ready for adoption, which means our next agenda item is the tentative meeting schedule, Mr. Orden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, tomorrow, we will again be meeting via Zoom for the adoption of the Fuele Huama order. Um, on July 22nd, we once again will be meeting by Zoom on Oahu for the A17804 adoption of order. On the 23rd of July, we will be again meeting by Zoom uh, with regard to uh, the Uni University of Nations matter. Um, AO2737 uh, from Hilo. Um, on August 12th, uh, we'll resume the Hawaii Memorial Park matter. Um, whether that is by Zoom or not, we're, we're waiting to make that determination. Uh, same with uh, August 13th. On August 26th, we will be on Maui for the Hana Hana motion. Um, on August 27th, we will be again on Maui for the Kihei High School night. <clears throat> September 9th, we will again be on Maui for the Sea Brewer bifurcation. And September 10th, continuation of that matter and the continuation of the Hana Hana motion to on that. <clears throat> on the 23rd, we will be on uh, Oahu for the Hawaiian Memorial Park matter and on the 24th for Halekua development. Um, in October and November we have set aside a series of meetings to handle uh, HB 2035 um, which requires the Land Use Commission to make a determination as to whether certain lands held by DLNR are more appropriately um, in agricultural use, um, I would suggest that the commissioners take a look at that um, bill. We're not sure it's, it, whether it's, it's passed the legislature. Uh, we don't have any reason to believe that the governor is going to veto it at the time. So we are, it requires us to make all our determinations by December, the end of December. So we have that set aside for October 7th and 8th and 21st, um, location to be determined on October 22nd, uh, we will be taking up the, in Hilo, taking up the new family trust matter and Hawaii, with Hawaii Island Land Trust. On November 4th, um, we will take up Halekua development if necessary. And then uh, November 5th, we have again set aside for HB 2035 matters. On November 18th, we will take up the Windward Hotel matter on Maui. And um, on the 19th, again, we will be taking up uh, HB 2035 matters. December 2nd, um, we will take up Pulama Lanai um, on Maui. Uh, and on the 3rd, we will take up the Barry Trust matter. On December 16th, we have set aside for the church matter in Hilo, and on December 17th, uh, the adoption of the Barry Trust order. And that takes us through the end of the year. Um, once again, I, I will ask the commissioners to keep dates open as our calendars fills up rapidly and we have many things that are percolating. Thank you very much, Mr. Ordenko. Commissioners, are there any questions for Dan? Commissioners, any questions? Seeing them. Our next agenda item is an action meeting on docket number A94706, Ka'onaulu Ranch, Maui, to consider the following matters. Pilani South LLCs and Pilani North LLCs and Honua Ula Partner LLCs motion to dismiss the order to show cause proceeding. Intervenors motion to conduct phase two of the contested case pending since 2012 and for final decision. Intervenors motion to strike portions of the petitioner's responses attempting to improperly submit evidence. Petitioner's motion to strike intervenors witness list and exhibit list. 
Will the parties for docket number A94706 please identify themselves for the record and remember to unmute yourselves. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Marjorie Brownster, and along with Rex Fujichaku and Randall Sakamoto, I represent Pi'ilani Promenade North and Pi'ilani Promenade South. Thank you, Ms. Bronster. Morning. Curtis Lamont for Honolulu Partners, also present as an attendee is Charles Jenks, representative of Honolulu Partners. Thank you, Mr. Tabata. Uh, for the County of Maui, Michael Hopper, Deputy Corporation Counsel representing the Maui County Department of Planning. I have Michelle McLean and Ann Kua with me as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Hopper. Good morning, Deputy Attorney General Donna Puna on behalf of the State Office of Planning. I'm with Rodney Funakoshi and Lorene Maki. Thank you. Mr. Aloha, Pierce. Commissioners. Uh, Tom Pierce on behalf of Maui Tomorrow Foundation, Inc., South Maui Citizens for Responsible Growth, and Daniel Kanahele. And uh, my uh, clients are participating electronically. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierce. Let me next update the record. At the September 25th and 26th, 2019 LUC meeting in Kahului, Maui, the commissioner heard a status report on this docket. On May 13th, 2020, the commission received notice that the settlement hearings on the docket had been unproductive, and the petitioner was requesting that the commission set an evidentiary hearing on Pi'ilani's motion to dismiss at the earliest practicable date and time. On May 25th, the commission received a notice of appearance of co-counsel Marjorie S. Bronster, Rex Fujichaku for Pi'ilani Promenade South LLC and Pi'ilani Promenade North LLC. From May 18th to June 26th, the commission received copies of various motions, exhibit lists, exhibits, responses, and memoranda of the parties, correspondence, and other documents associated with this case that have been made part of the record. On June 30th, the commission mailed the July 8th and 9th, 2020 notice of the agenda to the parties, as well as to our statewide and Maui regular and email mailing lists. On July 7th, the commission received a stipulation by the parties as to the matters on this docket. For the members of the public, please be reminded that the commission will be focused today on the matters listed on the agenda and will not be considering the merits of the A94706 petition. Rather, the commission is interested in hearing testimony about the motions in front of them today. I will briefly run over our procedures. First, I will recognize written testimony that has been submitted in this matter, identifying the person or organization who has submitted it. Next, I will call for individuals who have pre-registered to provide public testimony for this docket. I will bring each person in to the main part of the Zoom meeting. I will swear you in, you will be in our virtual um, witness box. You will have two minutes to testify in this matter, and then you will be available for questioning by the parties and the commissioner. Um, after all questions are completed, I will excuse you and bring in the next witness. After all registered testifiers have completed their testimonies, I will then call for any individuals in the general audience who wish to, uh, I. Um, testify in this matter. You should all have access to the raise hand function on your Zoom meeting um, software. If you, as you raise your hands, I will bring you in and repeat the same procedure of swearing you in, offering you two minutes of testimony, and you're being available for questions. After completion of all public testimony on this proceeding, I will give an opportunity for the parties to admit any exhibits into the record. And after the admission of any exhibits, the petitioners will present their case, followed by presentations by the County of Maui, the Office of Planning, and the intervener. The chair will also, from time to time, note that we will take um, questions, or excuse me, we will take short breaks on this matter. Are the parties clear with our proceedings for today? Starting with the petitioner. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. Tom Pierce for your interveners, yes. Great. Thank you very much. Um, the list I have from our chief clerk includes the follow following public test, written public testimony that's been received on this um, matter so far is from Richard Moss, 
Dr. May Trotto, D. Austin, Rebecca D. Liberto, and Mele Stokesbury. Next, I will ask, um, with the assistance of either Mr. Derrickson or um, Mr. Hakoda, to identify individuals who have pre-registered to provide testimony on this matter. Are there any such individuals? Oh, uh, this is Riley Hakoda, Chief Clerk. No, no testifiers. Okay. No testifiers. Okay. Are there any members of the public who are attending the meeting who wish to? Um, participate. Okay, I have one raised hand, two raised hands. I'm first going to be admitting Lucien Denay into um, the meeting. If you will enable your audio and video, Ms. Denay. Uh, thank you. I can't uh, use my video or I'll lose the bandwidth. I, uh, I no problem, um, if possible. <coughs> We you asked for video, but in. if understood, it's not. I'm going to swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. You have two minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Lucy Andy Ney, and I've uh, spent many hours on this land, and it is likely that this will be the last day that this matter will be heard. And I just wanted to read into the record so that it does not disappear. Uh, some things that have been shared by cultural users over the land about its nature, that this area, uh, this particular um, parcel was a small village, one of a string of Malka villages along the coast where fishing families lived in the 1500s on. And uh, it was located between these two gulches, Kalanik Hakoi and the small gulch. There was a petroglyph found on the land and others found Malka, which indicate a traditional pathway passed through this land. The one interpretation of the symbol on the petroglyph, which was removed from the site, um, would be that it marked the location of a small freshwater spring, which could indicate why there was a small village there. The village was only 10 to 12 families, and it was related to the large fish ponds constructed along the coastline, immediately Mackay. And the sites that we find remaining on this, um, uh, this particular parcel were used by the villagers for observation of the weather and celestial patterns to help the residents effectively manage uh, the food resources of the land and the sea. And the people who built the fish ponds, who were the great chiefs of Maui uh, from the Pi'ilani uh, clan, along with the assistance of Umi uh, from the Big Island, uh, likely came to this place for observations because it's the right elevation to see certain things in the ocean and certain weather patterns and to know uh, when things would be propitious for uh, certain activities to take place. And the Hawaiians were very, very much attuned to that. Uh, the coastline of Kihei once had populations all along it because there were freshwater ponds along- Two minutes, Mr. Coast. May. Anyway, that is just uh, what I would like to have in the record that this place does have a longer history. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Denae. Are there any questions for the witness? Ms. Bonster. Sorry. Uh, there are no questions for this witness. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Tabata. No questions. Thank you. Maui County. No questions. OP. No questions. Interveners. No questions. Okay. Our next four public witnesses, thank you, Ms. Denae. I will um, take you out of being a participant to an attendee. Um, I'm now gonna bring in Brett Gobar, followed by Rob Weltman, followed by Stephen Goldsmith, followed by Char Schulenberg. I will be bringing in Mr. Gobar into the meeting. If you can enable your audio and video, please. Yes, please, can you hear me? I can hear you, we see a photo. Thank you, my name's Brett Gobar, I live in- uh, Mr. Gobar, I'm gonna swear you in. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth? I do. Thank you. So state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Yes, please, Brett Gobar, 127 Alaiki Place, Paia. 
Um, I came to Maui because Dr. Yakanetti is my mom's cousin. He came here in 1955. You'll remember him on the planning commission. And uh, I agree with his general attitude, although he's gone now, uh, slowing down the growth in Maui. This Kihei Mall idea uh, could be a big mistake. I do not expect, I'm a real estate broker and investor, by the way, as well as a farmer formerly from Ulu Palakua. I do not expect to see demand for more commercial property increase in the next 15 years. Uh, the virus will cause a reduction in local incomes and spending and demand for additional commercial facilities for at least the next decade and probably longer. We may see many jobs going back to the mainland and lose some of our population. Building a new commercial structure like the new Lowe's and the new Target and the new Safeway has obviously caused blight in the older commercial shopping areas in Kahului and Wailuku, providing wide open spaces for homeless people and degrading the area. We cannot continue this trend to blight our older areas. Business have, have left these areas a wasteland. The best planning practices, and I did study planning in college, dictate the county first redevelop existing blighted areas where housing, transportation, and infrastructure already exist. I urge you to put this project and others like it on hold. Thank you for your consideration, Brett Gobar. Aloha. Thank you, Mr. Gobar. Um, are there any questions, petitioners? No questions from uh, P.E. Lani. Mr. Tabata. No questions. No questions. No questions. Tom Pierce for interveners, no questions. Thank you very much for your testimony, Mr. Gobar. Hello. I will now be bringing in Mr. Rob Weltman. Rob, if you will um, enable your video, please, if possible. Oops, just turn it. Hello, Hello. Michael. Good morning. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Okay. Name and address for the record and then proceed. Thank you. Rob Weltman, 188 Walua Place, Kihei, Maui. Uh, I did submit written testimony. I'm not sure why it didn't show up in the register, but uh, I'll just summarize very briefly. I'm speaking for Sierra Club of Maui, Maui right now. Um, there are three things I think are worth considering on whether or not to dismiss this. First one is has have the options for what can be done given the uh, the current uh, designation been defined well enough that we know what, what the potential outcomes can be and what, what are the things that could be built there the second one is what exactly is the plan being proposed and the third one is have things changed since 1995 meaning that we need to look again at what is the best use of this land uh, brett mentioned some things but there's also the issue of flooding uh, in, in, uh, in North Kihei. And one of the things that's come up many times there is, is what can we do in the Mauka land to uh, prevent the flooding below the highway? So I think given those three things, I would be against dismissing and continue to keep an eye on and define better what the future outcomes should be for this land. Mahalo. Thank you, Mr. Welton. Questions for the witness? This is Marjorie Bronster for P.E. Lani, no questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. Tom Pierce for interveners, no questions. Commissioners. Commissioner Okuda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Weldman, for your testimony. Are you speaking on behalf of the Sierra Club? Yes, I am. Uh, were you aware or are you aware or is the club aware that the interveners and the uh, petitioners have apparently entered into a stipulation to resolve this matter? Uh, no. The, la the latest communication I have read is that the, uh, the, the discussions on settlement 
failed to result in, a, in an agreement. Okay, so I, I just wanted to just see or check whether or not you were aware and had an opportunity to review uh, uh, the stipulation that has been submitted to the Land Use Commission. I, I have not. I've only uh, read, read an overview of it, a summary of it. Okay, you've read an overview of the stipulation. Is that your testimony? An overview of the of the motion to dismiss. Oh, okay. Thank, uh, uh, thank you. I, I just wanted that clarification. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No further questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okuda. Um, are there further questions, commissioners, for Mr. Weltman? Um, if seeing none, I would just add. Um, to Mr. Okuda's comments that because the interveners and the parties have stipulated to this, um, our ability to continue this proceeding is significantly limited as your, as your request, um, since the interveners have already um, agreed via stipulation to resolve all the matters in the manner laid out in the stipulation. And I believe that stipulation has been posted to the Land Use Commission's website. Thank you very much, Mr. Weltman, um, for your testimony. Um, I'm going to move you to be an attendee okay. and I'm gonna bring in Stephen Goldsmith. If you can enable your audio and video, Mr. Goldsmith. You are muted. There you uh, go. Now you're unmuted. Wouldn't... Are you able to enable your video? Um, sorry. There we go. There I am. Thank you. I'm Stephen Goldsmith. Good morning. Aloha. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I so swear. Thank you. So state your name and address for the record and then proceed. You have two minutes. My name is Stephen Goldsmith. I live at 44 Kanani Road in Kihei. I'm speaking on behalf of myself today. I'm clearly not as well informed as everyone here, but just very briefly, I wasn't aware that uh, the stipulation did uh, happen. So my, my only major concern is just the traffic involved with this. As a resident of Kihei for 20 years, I've seen it go from the two lanes to the four lanes to fill up. I see what happens in the afternoon on Lapoa Street, just from the Kihei Charter School. So my biggest concern is the impact on the community both on the highway and if this is truly the highest and best use for this land. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for all your service. That, that concludes my testimony. Thank you very much, Mr. Goldsmith. Um, questions, starting with Ms. Bronster. Uh, no questions. Mr. Tabata. No questions. Mr. Hopper. No questions, Chair. Ms. Apuna. No questions. Mr. Pierce. No questions. Commissioners. Um, I don't see any questions. Mr. Goldsmith, thank you very much for taking the time to participate. We appreciate it. I am putting you to become an attendee again, and I'm going to let in um, Char Schulenberg. Um, if the witness would enable your audio and video, please. Where's my video? Um, it's, it's probably not on this, probably not on this one. Aloha, can you hear me? I can hear you. Is it I, possible to not yeah, enable I'm your video? I'm trying to figure that out. Do I hit share screen? No. Oh. Uh, you should hit um, a video oh, icon. Oh, I see it. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> ah, we can see you now. Thank you. <laughs> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes. Okay. So name and address for the record, and then you have two minutes. Charlene Schulenberg, 1390 South Kihei Road. Uh, thank you, every, everyone. I understand you're all volunteers. Um, I did not know uh, that an agreement had been met, and I have not uh, seen it or had a chance to read it. Um, but whether there's an agreement or not, I'm concerned about uh, drainage and flooding 
uh, regarding this property. The 1995 plan, um, I don't know what it took into account and I don't know when the last review of, of any uh, drainage plan has been uh, conducted. We have learned an awful lot since 1995, uh, Mauka to Makai and how people, uh, Makai will be directly affected uh, and they already are. If uh, the gulch and the uh, redirection of the water is uh, substantial, uh, you know, Kulani Hakoi already floods. Um, according to a 2015 uh, water quality study, uh, there was uh, about 111 uh, acres of wetlands left in about 1995. There are less than 20 acres left. Um, this is what happens. This is, uh, this is a picture of what happens at uh, um, a different gulch that is uh, a little bit south of Kulani Hakoi. But the, the brown water events are significant and the flooding and the street flooding um, is significant every single time. We're concerned because the 100 year storm thing just doesn't make any sense anymore. I mean, we've had like eight storms since 2005. And um, in those times, I, you know, people, even seven people had to be saved in and around uh, Halani, Kulani Hakoi Bridge area. So there's a lot to consider. And I would say if there's a chance to put a condition on anything, that's, that would be my recommendation, is to at least have the EIS uh, reviewed with regard to flooding and drainage. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Schulenberg. Um, before I offer questions, I'm going to note to Mr. Hokoda or Mr. Derrickson, there's been a request that a link to the stipulation be posted in the Q&A if possible. Um, so um, starting with Ms. Bromster, are there questions for the witness? No questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tabata. No questions. Mr. Hopper. Uh, no questions. Ms. Apuna. No questions. Mr. Pierce. No questions. Commissioners. Seeing no questions. Thank you very much for taking the time to testify on this matter. Thank you. Um, we have one other person who has raised their hand, Ms. Claire Apana. I'm going to admit her into the meeting as a panelist. Ms. Apana, if you can enable your audio and video when you come into the meeting. Ms. Apana, can you please enable your video if please. possible? There we go. Oh, you're gone away. Um, I will also note that, and I do not hear it, but apparently some attendees are hearing food chewing. So if you are chewing food, please mute yourself um, until you need to speak. Uh, are you able to enable your video, Ms. Apana? Can you hear me? Can you at least give audio, please? Ms. Apana? Okay, oh. You're muted. Can you hear us? And can you say something, please? Okay, we can see you now. Can you say something? Auntie Claire, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Are there any other individuals while we're waiting to see whether we can resolve this audio issue? 
Are there any other individuals who wish to provide public testimony on this matter? If so, please use the raise hand function. Okay. Um, Ms. Apana, I'm going to demote you back to the audience, see whether or not you can get your audio up and running. I'm going to admit Mike Wildberger. Good morning, Mr. Wildberger. If you can enable your audio and video. She might, she might just have, you know, have to turn up her volume. Um, she's wearing headphones, which I- Scott, we can hear you. There's a speaker or something connected. Mike Wildberger here. I don't wanna say it. Good morning. Are you able to enable your, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, it's up to her to take her out, not us. Mr. Derrickson, we cannot, we can hear you in the background. So, um, good morning. Would you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Mr. Wildberger. Oh, I said Mr. Derrickson. Yes. Okay. You have two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record and proceed. Mike Wildberger. My home address is 2710 Calhalla Street. Uh, I'm a businessman. I own a 4,000 square foot factory warehouse adjoining the subject property. Um, I've been in business two decades there. Uh, in that time, I haven't found a shortage of commercial property or even retail property in the Central Valley or Kihei. Uh, our own units have never been fully rented out. That hasn't driven prices down. So I don't know what the stipulation agreement you guys came to. I wasn't able to find it on the website, but it just seems like from the point of view, someone's out there working with people looking for space, there's not a demand. And the abundance of empty spaces hasn't resulted and a drop of pricing that would benefit local businesses. So building more at this time, especially considering the current pandemic, just seems like a bad idea. Uh, I think everybody else addressed all the other concerns, but I just want to agree with the realtor that spoke earlier that I just don't think the project's a good use of Kihei space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wildberger. Um, are there questions for Mr. Wildberger, Ms. Bonster? No questions. Mr. Tabato. No questions. Mr. Hopper. No questions, Chair. Ms. Apuna. No questions. Mr. Pierce. No questions. Okay. Um, and um, Mr. Wildberger, I have asked the staff to see if the link can be posted um, to the Q&A section. I will advise that we only received this late yesterday ourselves. So. Thank you. Um, so don't feel too far out of the loop. Um, <laughs> I do want to say too, this is one of the better Zoom meetings I've attended so far. You guys, we have an here. excellent, excellent <laughs> staff who have worked very hard. That's, that's what makes it happen. Possible. Thank you. Um, are there any questions, commissioners, for Mr. Wildberger? Seeing none, um, thank you very much for your testimony. Um, I'm going to admit Patricia Stillwell. Good morning, Ms. Stillwell. Can you enable your audio and video, please? That can be done. Yes, there I am. There you are. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Patricia Stillwell, 227 Kamakoi Loop in Kihei, Maui. And I also submitted written testimony on Monday that I didn't know whether or not you received. And this was written prior to knowing that there is new information. So um, bear with me on maybe old information. But anyway, um, I'm submitting the uh, testimony to request that you do not dismiss the order to show cause brought by interveners Sarah Firm has yet to describe what their plans are for the subject property. Community needs have certainly changed in the past 25 years since the original plans for light industrial development, which then morphed into a big box commercial center. The community summarily rejected this commercial center, both as unwanted, outdated, and not in compliance with the conditions of the LUC, and that was many years ago. It is not realistic to expect 
the community needs will be fulfilled with an outdated 25 year old vision that would not be a benefit for the community. Given the changing environment of our economy and the lifestyles in 2020, and what we have learned about our environment since, an industrial park would likely be a vacant ghost town located at the entrance to our beach community that we endeavor to make appealing and welcoming. And I wanna mahalo you for all of your time, effort, and support in honoring the needs of our community and the rule of law. Thank you. Was that the conclusion of your testimony? Yes, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Um, questions for the witness? Ms. Bronster? No questions. Mr. Tabata? No questions. Mr. Hopper? No questions. Ms. Apuna? No questions. Mr. Pierce? No questions. Commissioners? Seeing none, thank you very much for your testimony. You're welcome. Um, I will now try and bring in Ms. Apana again to see whether or not we can get her testimony. We can see you, you're muted and your volume might be low. So first you need to unmute. There, you're unmuted now. Can you say something please? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. This is great. Yeah. Oh, God, okay. thank you. I can't you believe it. Yep. Do you swear or affirm day? that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Clara Pana. I live at 260 Halinani Drive, Wailuku, Maui. And I have testified before you today, uh, before today, at the last hearing, and I am quite um, surprised by the events that have happened. I have attended and spoken with the developer and I, I understand that they have said that they hear us, but I don't see any preservation of the sites that, anyway, the site that I am most concerned about of, I'm concerned about all of them, but I don't see the data recovery to, to identify which are the important sites to be saved. And I don't see preservation of the site that I go to. I'm very upset about that. And I don't know how this agreement came to be, but I understand from doing a contested case, how hard it is and how long it takes and how, people with money drag things out and, and cause so much money to be spent by the other side, which is the people, that sometimes you just can't do it. And, and I don't know if that's what happened, but I suspect that there's something like this, like a no, uh, an impasse that could not be met. And I have gone and I have testified and spoken with the developer several times about my concerns and my cultural practice and the cultural practice of my Kumu, Michael Lee, and I don't see them being um, protected. I would like you to be sure that they are protected before you allow this to go forward. I, I, I just don't know that, that, that this has happened at all and it is not- Two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Apana. Okay. Are there questions for the witness, Ms. Bonster? No questions. Mr. Tabata? No questions. Mr. Hopper? No questions. Ms. Apuna? No questions. Mr. Pierce? No questions. Commissioners? Um, anything from the commissioners? Um, Ms. Apana, the nature of the, 
as will be explained more in our proceedings that follow, the nature of the stipulation is that um, everything is going back to the original approval by the Land Use Commission. So all the parties, including the interveners, have agreed to remove um, all the various motions and other things that they've requested in front of the LUC and simply go back to what the original approved docket was. So I'm not gonna say anything more than that at this time, um, but that should become clearer over the course of our proceedings today. Thanks. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Apana. Um, and thanks for your persistence and being heard with the technical issues. Um, Mr. Foster Ampong has his hand up. I'm going to promote him to panelist. You can enable your audio and video, please. Aloha, good morning. Good morning. Uh, please, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, please proceed. Name and address for the record. Uh, commissioners, my name is Foster Ampong. I live at 58 Ho'oloho Street, Wailuku, Maui. Um, I just wanted to, 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 to testify um, earlier, um, Chairman, I heard you read off those that submitted the written testimonies uh, to the LUC on this matter. And um, I'm now speaking on behalf of Vernie Kalanikau, uh, that he did submit a written testimony regarding this agenda item. And because I didn't hear his name mentioned, I just wanted to, um, to say that I, I just spoke with Vernon. He does want his voice to be put on record regarding this matter, even though um, I just learned that there was a stipulation submitted. And so um, with that said, I, I just want to let the commissioners know that Vernon Kalanikau uh, lives in Kaunu'ulu. His family has lived and comes from the Ahupua'a of Kaunu'ulu, uh, Kalepo Lepo. And so um, not only does his family reside currently, but has ancestral ties to this whole Ahupua'a on the Makai side, as well as the Mauka area of Kaunu'ulu. And so um, if you didn't receive his written testimony, um, when he gets out of his doctor appointment, he'll be happy to submit it. But he, I, I believe he did submit it um, prior to 9 a.m. yesterday morning. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Ampong. Are there questions for the witness? No, no questions from P. Lani. thank you. Mr. Tabata. No questions. Mr. Hopper. No questions. Ms. Apuna. No questions. Mr. Pierce. No questions. Commissioners. Uh, does the staff have any clarification about um, testimony that may have been submitted after the list was um, given to me? Mr. Chair, this is Riley Hakolo speaking. Uh, Mr. Derrickson is checking. I think at 9 a.m. yesterday, might have been a little bit late, but we're inundated with a lot of filings, so it may be buried in the paperwork. We're, we're checking for it. We apologize uh, to Mr. Kalani. Okay. And, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hokoda. It will be part of the record of this proceeding, even uh -huh. if I didn't note it, that it had been received um, along with the other items that I listed. Are there any further questions, commissioners, for Mr. Um, I'm going to make a last call for any attendees in the public attendee portion of the Zoom meeting to use the raise your hand function to um, see if you have to wish to de deliver public testimony on this matter. If so, I will bring you in. If not, I will close public testimony on this matter. Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm gonna close public testimony on this matter. Um, so our next order of proceedings is to call on any
Chair. Can you repeat that, please? Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, you're breaking up. Yeah, I, I noticed that everybody had frozen, which meant that I was the one who was probably frozen. Sorry for that. Our next order is to exhibit, enter into the record any exhibits from any of the parties, beginning with the Lani Promenade. Um, we would have nothing additional to add today other than what has been previously filed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tabata. Uh, we have five exhibits here. Um, previously served on all the parties. Um, exhibit one is the unilateral agreement. Um, exhibit two is uh, ordinance number 3553. Um, exhibit number three is ordinance number 4849. Four is Maui Industrial Partners Job Cost Payment Retention Detail. And number five is Honua Ula Partners LLC uh, 670 cost breakdown. Request that they be entered into the record as evidence. Mr. Chair, if I may clarify. Get to the record. Starting. Yes. Um, Please. I, I apologize. Um, the petitioners submitted a third amended exhibit list and we would like those exhibits to be entered into evidence. Okay. Um, is it okay if I go with Mr. Tabata's and back to yours? I'm sorry. No, no problem. Of course. Um, are there any objections to Mr. Tabata's exhibits being entered into the record? First, um, Ms. Bronster. No objection. Mr. Hopper. No objection. Ms. Apuna. No objection. Mr. Pierce. No objection. Commissioners. Seeing no objections, the exhibits are entered to the record and will be numbered appropriately. Going back to Ms. Bronster's exhibits, would you describe them, please? Yes, we would request that the third amended exhibit list uh, that was filed on June 26, 2020, which contains exhibits numbered one through 38, all be admitted into evidence. Okay. Any objections to those being entered into the record? Mr. Tabata? No objection. No objection. Ms. No Apuna. Objection. No objection. Mr. Pierce. No objection. Commissioners. Those are entered into the record and appropriately numbered. Thank you. Um, county. Thank you. The, the County of Maui did submit a witness and exhibit list. Uh, we didn't have anything new since we had filed that. But I'm, I, I don't believe the commission ever accepted the exhibits. They were just exhibits one and two. Um, one is the uh, position statement and the other is a resume of Michelle McLean that would have been a, a witness. But um, I think that we don't have anything in addition to that. So hopefully those have either already been uh, admitted or can be admitted here. Those would be the only exhibits the county would have. Um, I'm just going to double check, but I believe we do actually have to admit those into the record prior to the adoption or consideration of the stipulated agreement. Is that correct, Mr. Ordinker? Um, Mr. Chair, they were submitted to prior to the last hearing and they have been um, already been adopted. Um, okay. But I, I'm not sure that we need to go through this exercise if, to move on to stipulation. Okay. Well, we're almost done. Um, Mr. Pierce. Uh, Mr. Chair, you were breaking up. I was not able to understand that. Okay. First, OP, I apologize. There seems to be some unknown cause of instability in my connection. Um, first, beginning with the Office of Planning, are there any records? 
Um, OP has no additional exhibits to enter into the record. Same question from the interveners. Interveners have, if I understand the question, Mr. Chair, the interveners have no uh, exhibits or witnesses to uh, enter. Okay, thank you. So um, with that said, we are now at 9.57 a.m. I'm going to suggest that before we get on to the consideration of the stipulated agreement, we take a 10 minute break. Um, I might be frozen. Can somebody confirm that you've heard that I'm suggesting we take a 10 minute recess? We heard that, Chair. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, no, no, no. it's 9, it's 9.57 a.m. We're going to recess till 10.07 a.m. while we'll take up the stipulation. Thank you. The LUC staff, that the stipulated decision is on the website. Um, in addition, if you can locate the question and answer section of this Zoom webinar, you can find a link to the stipulated decision in the Q&A. In addition, I have an update that um, late testimony received in the last 24 hours, um, not yet posted to the website, has been received from Lehua Nani Huddleston Hafoka, Jean Schott, um, Rob Weltman, Rod Antone, Eric Miller, Vernon kalani Cal, Mike Wildberger, Leah Stoli, Therese Masters, Carol Lee Kamikona, Ke Kelly Uderitz, Patricia Stilwell, and Virginia Hertz. With that, um, Mr. Tabata, um, I, the chair understands the parties have proposed a stipulation the meeting agenda items noted for the docket. Um, and I, I'm not sure exactly who, but is it Mr. Tapata? Are you going to be presenting the stipulation at first or who is? I believe uh, Marjorie Bronster is going to. Okay. Be. Thank you. Ms. Bronster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, commissioners. Um, I also want to thank um, all of the parties and their counsel, um, because as the commissioner said, uh, the chair said earlier, at the, in May, uh, the parties had come to an impasse and we did not believe that, that it was going to be possible to come to a settlement of the issues and to avoid the hearing um, that is now before you. Uh, we worked very hard and were able to come up with an agreement um, actually within the last 48 hours, which is why uh, we submitted our stipulation at 12.18 on 7.7, which was yesterday. Um, it has been a very long and hard road to get here, but I think that the parties have come together and the agreements that we've reached that are laid out in the stipulation uh, make specific requests to the commission um, that will obviate the need for a hearing on the merits today of any of the currently pending motions. Specifically, the parties ask the Land Use Commission to act at the party's request um, consistent with what is set out in paragraph 10 of the stipulation. And specifically, we ask that the Land Use Commission adopt the stipulation as an order. Um, that would include determining that there are no violations of the 1995 DNO and that the site plan for the petition area, including um, what, is, what is attached as exhibit N, uh, satisfies condition five of the 1995 DNO and to dismiss the OSC proceeding in its entirety, including phase two, based on the stipulations and representations of the party and to lift the stay imposed by the order granting the stay. That would also obviate the need to take up the other motions, which are the motions to strike um, that the chair mentioned at the outset. Um, in general, uh, this is based on the party's commitments that the presentation that was made in 2013 
has been formally um, withdrawn, and that's reiterated in the stipulation. And the parties have also agreed to pursue the creation of conservation easements as set forth in Exhibit N, which is attached to the stipulation and proposed order. Um, and specifically, if you look at Exhibit N, uh, which we have attached, it highlights two particular areas uh, which will be treated as conservation easements and that the parties uh, will work at getting those formalized. Um, it has necessitated some minor changes uh, to the roadways. Um, and you can see that with little cul-de-sacs um, at various places to leave these conservation easements um, without basically being no build zones. Um, the parties will work together and we believe that this will not violate the 1995 uh, decision and order. And accordingly, we ask the commission to accept the party's representations and the stipulation and enter the orders as requested. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bronster for that overview of the stipulated agreement. Um, procedurally, um, I was thinking I would first offer um, to the parties to provide any additional comments regarding what you've summarized and then ask the commissioners whether there's any questions for any of the parties. Um, is that acceptable procedurally? That's, we have no problem with that. Um, so, Mr. Tabata, do you have anything to add to what's been shared already about the stipulation? I have nothing to add, thank you. Okay. Mr. Hopper. Uh, the, the County of Maui is supportive of the settlement agreement, and we have signed the settlement agreement. We think that it's uh, important to have the site plan before you so that the commission can see um, what's proposed and, and confirm that that's consistent with the 1995 decision and order. Um, this, this may not resolve all of the issues down the line um, until the end of time, but I think at this point, um, this will deal with the order to show cause that has been filed and have that, that resolved. That did involve an earlier um, different site plan that has been since abandoned, so we think that that's, that's a, a productive step. Um, and uh, so the county has uh, approved this agreement and uh, hopes it to finish well as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. Ms. Apuna. Um, OP has no comments. Okay. Mr. Pierce. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I would just ask the commissioners uh, to pay close attention to the language in the stipulation because that's what controls. Uh, there are a few things that Ms. Bronster said that aren't, um, and I don't think it was uh, intended uh, 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 to be other than what the stipulation is, but a, a few of those things I think uh, are better said. Uh, for example, um, in section uh, 10A, what we're asking the commissions to do is, uh, and I'm paraphrasing a portion of it, quote, determine that there are no current violations of the 1995 DNO. So I would ask the commissioners to pay close attention to it. Uh, the stipulation and the words, that's what the interveners have agreed to. Um, and uh, the other uh, point I would like to make is that um, Ms. Bronster uh, spent some time talking about conservation easements. And I would just note that um, that is something that uh, was uh, presented and admitted in the evidence this morning by the, um, it had been uh, submitted at an earlier date to the commission. Uh, and this is exhibit, uh, this was a uh, proposed exhibit. N. Uh, actually, uh, they're identified as petitioners exhibits 36 through 38. And it also does have an N on it. Um, uh, but they're identified in a, in a filing that was called uh, Petitioner's Exhibits 36 through 38 that was filed with the commission on 
June 26, 2020, and those were admitted in evidence this morning. So this is um, something that uh, uh, the uh, petitioners of their own initiative had proposed, uh, apparently were proposing to the commission. Okay. And we have nothing further to add at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Um, with that, commissioners, um, we have a stipulation before us and some summary comments. Um, I'd like to open it up for questions by, from the commissioners towards any of the parties. Um, starting with Mr. O I may have frozen. Mr. Okuda? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Ms. Bronster, uh, can I ask you a question about uh, what's been identified on the attached plan as conservation easement? Ms. Bronster? Sorry about that. I will. You can certainly ask and hopefully I will be able to answer. And if not, I've got lots of resources to, to help out. Okay, great. Um, is that designation of conservation easement irrevocable? For example, if for some reason there is a future petition to change, as an example, the layout or something like that, will the the location and the easement as described in the operative documents still be irrevocable? That, that is the plan, Mr. Okuda. Um, if you take a look at paragraph five of the stipulation, um, what the petitioners agreed to do was they agreed to continue to consult in good faith with the lineal and cultural descendants of the petition area and members of the Ahamoku or Kulakai to discuss the terms of access under the conservation easements to be established by petitioners within the areas listed on the attached exhibit N. The plan is that this would run with the land and it would be irrevocable. Um, this is something that came up at the uh, 11th hour and so we have not yet uh, established the conservation easement but we wanted the land use commission to approve the the plan and I'm sorry to dismiss the order to show cause to lift the stay and enable us to work um, as outlined in paragraph 5 to get these established and they will run with the land now, uh, we all hope and I'm sure everyone working in good faith will uh, have a result which will benefit everyone. Might not be the perfect result, but it would benefit everyone in the end. But my question is this, if there is a dispute, do you agree that the plain language of the stipulation, if it were to be adopted by the Land Use Commission, the plain language of the document will control what uh, everyone's duties and obligations and rights are. Yes, Mr. Okuda, um, we do. Um, and I, I believe that if I paraphrase something earlier um, that differed from what the plain language of the stipulation and proposed order says, um, certainly the stipulation would control. Yeah, and for the benefit of the community, because uh, I, I personally know, having sat through these hearings, that community members spent a lot of time taking time from their jobs or other things that are important to testify. And democracy always works really well when everyone uh, testifies and participates. But can you uh, maybe in plain English explain even though we understand the plain language of the stipulation controls, what is uh, the effect on having what's been, you know, kind of called popularly in the media, 
the Maui Mega Mall. What, what does this stipulation mean for the Maui Mega Mall or any other kind of mall or things like that? Well, I think that, that the stipulation in order um, very specifically deals with what has been called the Maui Mega Mall because I think that the petitioners um, listened to the, you know, what has happened in the past, has listened to the community, and the mega mall is what has been referred to as what we call the 2013 plan. That plan has been withdrawn and it is formally, um, P.E. Lani formally reiterated its withdrawal of the 2013 plan in this stipulation. And I refer everybody to paragraph one. So the mega mall, um, as described in the 2013 plan, um, has been withdrawn and will not be built as outlined. Um, and that is a commitment that uh, Pi'ilani Promenade has made. Um, and I, I don't mean to speak for uh, Mr. Tabata, but paragraph two uh, refers to the workforce housing plan, which was also uh, formally withdrawn. And that was outlined in this, in this petition as well. So the parties uh, have agreed to go back to the 1995 plan. Um, and we believe that exhibit N as attached substantially complies with that 1995 plan. Dan, a, a final question or group of questions. The, there's been public testimony pretty consistent public testimony about concerns about cultural resources or potential cultural resources on the property, also concerns about flooding issues, things like that. Does the stipulation in any way take away any of the community's rights, remedies, or future arguments with respect to the issues that have been raised such as flooding or impacts on cultural activities or cultural resources or archeological sites? Um, Mr. Okuda, as the stipulation I think makes clear, uh, what we were attempting to do and what the parties have agreed to do was come to agreement to dismiss the order to show cause and lift the stay and allow this project to go forward. Um, we were listening to the community and that was why we came up with the concept of doing these two conservation easements. But other than what is specifically outlined in the stipulation in order, there is not an impact on the community's rights um, as, as your question suggested. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, no further questions, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Okuda. Um, we have co questions from Commissioners Ohigashi, followed by Commissioner Chang. I'm taking a look at page number five. I'm not sure who can answer this, but maybe one of you can. The uh, page number five. 510A. And I'm just asking because it says at the end is this, stip, this stipulation satisfies the last sentence of condition five. By condition five, you mean paragraph five in the stipulation? Or no. No. I'm sorry. No, condition five refers to. I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah. That's uh, so, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Response sorry. Just, to, just to identify yourself before speaking, please. Cer certainly. For the court report. Um, and I, I apologize. This is Marjorie Bronster on behalf of P.E. Um, mm -hmm. And I apologize for uh, taking a moment. I just wanted to make sure that my colleagues agreed with me mm -hmm. when I stated that it, the condition five that is referred to is condition five of the 1995 DNO. Okay, and that's, re that's referred to in, uh, I guess, 
paragraph F, page number two, all right? That is correct. Okay. Second question that I have is that under same page, it says neither this stipulation nor any short form memorandum shall be recorded in the Bureau of Conveyances. Is there any other short form memorandum that this stipulation that affects this stipulation or does it, uh, and is the, are the parties going to submit those short form memorandums at this time? No, there are no other short form memoranda. The purpose of this paragraph was to make it clear that we were not intending that this stipulation or anything that described this stipulation would be uh, recorded with the Bureau. And from I think this stipulation says, states that it is clear that the workforce housing plan, that's, this is on page three, number two, is totally gone. Is that right? I think I would best uh, like to refer this to Mr. Tabata, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Yes, uh, we are, we have formally reiterated our withdrawal of the workforce housing plan for oh. our acre parcel. Will there be any housing on the parcel? On our 13 acre parcel, um, as of this stipulation, no. Now, the parties are asking us to make certain statements and one is that there's no current violation of the 1995 DNO and before we can do that is it my understanding that you've all stipulated that there is sufficient facts to support that finding? I believe so um, you know based on the record that uh, the Commission has assembled um, we we have agreed to withdraw our workforce housing plan for our 13 acre parcel. Uh, this doesn't mean that in the future, we may make a request, a future request, uh, but based on this stipulation and the record before us, we have, we have agreed to withdraw our okay. first housing plan. Well, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a little ahead. I'm a, I'm a little bit ahead and maybe you're a little bit behind, but I understood that there wouldn't be any workforce housing. I'm moving on to my sec another part, which uh, states that you ask, you're asking the commission to make certain findings. So in, going back to 10A on page number five, the, the first finding you're asking, you're asking is that there are no current violations of the 1995 DNO a new site plan for the petition area. I just wanted to be sure on the record that all parties stipulate that there's sufficient facts to support this finding. Mr. Ohigashi, is that a question for each of the council? Yes. Okay, so start with- In fact, Ms. In fact everyone. Yeah. May, may I begin, Mr. Yes, Chair? Yes, please. please. Um, in, in response to Member Ohigashi's question, uh, we believe that there are ample facts to support the, the finding that there are no current violations of the 1995 DNO as specifically set forth in the stipulation as well as in P. E. Lani's um, earlier submissions. Uh, the specifics of the, the violations um, that that were uh, at issue, I think we have uh, substantially outlined in our, in our uh, papers, but I believe that the stipulation itself uh, points out that the parties do agree that there are no uh, current violations of the 1995 DNO. And if 
uh, anyone would like me to, I can go into each one of the, uh, of the issues that had been addressed uh, in the underlying papers. But um, we outlined those in our motion to dismiss the um, order to show cause. I'm just trying to get on the record, Ms. Bronser, whether or not all the parties agree and stipulate that there is sufficient facts to support this particular finding. And you can say no, yes. Well, we believe yes, and I'll let the others speak for themselves. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Sabata. Thank you. On behalf of Honolulu Partners, our answer to Commissioner Ohigashi's question is yes. Maui County. Michael Hopper, Deputy Corporation Counsel for Maui County. Uh, the county agrees that there are no current violations of the 1995 decision and order as of this date. The, I think the main issue was that the, uh, when the commission uh, voted to find a violation, it was based on a, a different site plan and different plans. And this makes clear that that's been withdrawn. Uh, so I, I do think that- I'm having trouble hearing you, Mr. Hopper. This is the court reporter. Can you speak closer to your microphone? I'm having um, difficulty. I'll, I'll do my best. Slightly, slightly more slowly, Mr. Hopper. Okay. Is this a little better? Much better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The county's position, I'll, I'll try to reiterate, is that there are no uh, current violations of the 1995 decision in order. I think the main issue previously with the commission was that it had found a violation based on different plans that this agreement makes clear have been withdrawn. Uh, what the current filings have said is that the, uh, that the landowners will proceed with a project that will be consistent with the 1995 decision in order, and they have put forward as a, an attached exhibit a site plan that is, is essentially the same as the conceptual plan that was provided to the commission uh, in 1995. Um, now, there will need to be continued development of this parcel, including, we believe, subdivision and other applications, and the county is going to have to review that as it would come forward, as it would with any other project. But uh, the county is uh, satisfied at this time that based on the filings in this docket, as well as the terms of the agreement, that there are no current violations of the 1995 decision in order. Mr. Ohigashi. Oh, I was just wondering, uh, Mr. Pierce, do you have me? <laughs> um, uh, commissioners, I would uh, refer you to uh, the sections of the stipulation that uh, interveners have um, uh, signed, and I will refer you to a couple that are specific to your uh, question, uh, Commissioner Ohigashi. <clears throat> Paragraph three. Um, and the uh, petitioners are stating that in accordance with condition 15 of the 1995 DNO, the petition area will be developed in substantial compliance with representations made by Ka'ono'ulu Ranch to the commission uh, back in 1995 uh, in support of the project that was identified as Ka'ono'ulu Industrial Park. Um, and then, of course, they've attached, uh, with respect to paragraph four, what is relevant there is they've attached a site plan that has um, similarities to the 1995 uh, uh, site plan that was proposed by the uh, petitioners at that point in time. And uh, we also would uh, point out the language, and I'm just looking for it here, if you'll give me one moment. I'm just looking for the section that uh, was in here that um, is just our request, uh, which is 10A that I mentioned before, that uh, we are just asking the commission to determine that there are no current violations. And we understand that that's a, um, uh, a commission decision on that respect. No further uh, response at this time. Mr. Ohigashi, did you have further 
questions of the panelists. Yeah, I, I just have one more. The, other, the last set of questions deal with what is the party's understanding if the motion to amend the DNO is withdrawn, motion to conduct phase two is withdrawn, motion to strike, motion to strike, uh, these, these motions are all are withdrawn. Is it my understanding that the stipulation would control any future matters concerning the parties in this case? In other words, let's say there's a violation of one of these agreements for some reason. Does that leave it to the commission to determine whether or not there's a violation whether or not motions can be, I guess, um, renewed, or is it left up to the parties to enter court, or what is the next? I just want to try and get an idea of what is the enforcement and what is the position. What what will the land use commission's role be in enforcing this agreement? Mr. Ohigashi, is that directed to a particular party or all parties? Uh, anyone who wishes to want to answer it, and I'm sure there'll be persons who disagree with it or, or <laughs> may disagree with each other, but I just like to I, get, I, 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 I just like to know what are we what are we gonna do after this is done? I mean to enforce this agreement. Maybe Ms. Rosser can start. I'd be happy to. Uh, Mr. Chair? Please. Thank you. Um, we view this stipulation as um, being a stipulation upon which the commission, and we are asking the commission to dismiss the order to show cause and lift the stay. Um, and so that this would be treated as any other ruling by uh, the Land Use Commission. So that it's based on the representations and commitments contained in the stipulation, and it would be treated as if it were any other order of the Land Use Commission. So if there were a violation, I suppose the parties would have the rights that they would have if there was any other order uh, that gave rise to a, you know, the commitments made to the commission were wrong. Just, just to follow up, Mr. Chair. So part of it is to lift this, part of this stipulation is to lift the stay. That is preventing substantial compliance type of activity to take place upon the property. Assuming that starts and there is a violation of this agreement, um, the Land Use Commission is without any jurisdiction, assuming that there's a finding that there's been substantial commencement, I'm, I'm sorry, substantial commencement, from enforcing any of the terms of this agreement with the ultimate sanction that the OSC had been requesting. So uh, is, that your, is that the party's understanding? Mr. Pierce, is that your understanding? Uh, Commissioner Ohigashi, I understood your first question. I do uh, want to respond to that, but this last question, I'm not fully understanding. Can you, uh, can you explain it again? Well, maybe it's a rambling question and that's why I'm not as precise as I should be. What I'm, what I'm getting at is this. Uh, we have this stipulation, an order. Ms. Bronson says that's the order of the commission. One of the terms of the order says that substantial, uh, the stay on the property, has, to lift the stay on the property. So petitioners go about and start their work on the property, substantial commencement. Then we find out that there is um, a violation of this agreement. Technically, the Land Use Commission, if there's substantial commencements, if they're fine, we cannot 
withdraw the, or do the things that the OSC wants us to do, that is to revert property. Is that the position of the, of the interveners, Mr. Pierce? Uh, uh, Commissioner Ohigashi, let me answer this way. We understand that um, this stipulation, as we've entered it with the, the terms that are associated with it, ends the con contested case. With respect to, and if the commissioners recall, this all was initiated by the interveners back in 2012. Uh, and there's two issues here. One is obviously that the um, County of Maui has an enforcement mechanism under chapter 205, why revised statutes. And then, um, and then the, the uh, Land Use Commission has a separate enforcement action. So we uh, uh, chose after our initial discussions with the county uh, to file a motion for an order to show cause. So I just want to bring, bringing this full circle, we understand that, uh, that this stipulation is ending uh, the contested case that was initiated by us through the motion for order to show cause and which was, uh, and of course the commission after that granted the uh, order to show cause and this has been a continuing proceeding. So we understand that's ending. So with respect to the contested case, there will be, we understand that there's no longer any enforcement rights under that, uh, including uh, requesting, for example, uh, uh, that the stay be uh, entered again or, um, or that there um, uh, be reverter. All those are, are, are ended as a result of our agreement pursuant to the stipulation to uh, end the contested case. We're giving up that right. What we're uh, then uh, with respect to what the stipulation stands for, it certainly has, um, uh, it, it certainly is an agreement and it's going to have a commission decision associated with it that the parties are requesting, which we think is necessary. And then, um, of course, we think that the Land Use Commission has ongoing uh, jurisdiction, I, which I believe the, uh, uh, the petitioner's attorney also uh, commented on. Uh, to continue to oversee this, of course, because it's an ongoing project that has not been completed. Does that assist uh, Commissioner Ohigashi? Well, I guess so, so long as you understand that under present rules that we have limited enforcement opportunities should co substantial commencement start on the property. Understood. Okay, anything further, Commissioner Ohigashi? No. Thank you very much. Commissioner Chang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Pierce, can I just follow up on Commissioner Ohigashi's question? Because um, looking at the proposed decision in order, it says determined that there are no current violations of 1995 decision in order. So is it my understanding that the interveners that come next year, the interveners um, are waiving any rights to challenge um, that any of the um, any of the specific conditions in the original DNO uh, that there will be no challenges by the interveners that there's been um, non-compliance, that you have agreed that they, there is no violation of any of the conditions in the 1995 DNO. Commissioner Chang, uh, thank you for the question and I, I appreciate the opportunity to clarify. And again, I think, um, the, the words of the stipulation are very important. And the, what we're requesting is that the commission has determined, we're requesting that the order include that the commission has determined that there are no current violations of the 1995 DNO. And we mean that literally what it means right now, as of today, we are not aware of any. Okay. Uh, to the extent, and, and of course, the way that we found out about this before was that there was um, activities that started to happen on the land we became aware of what the, uh, um, what, uh, I apologize, let me just turn this off. Uh, we, um, we, you know, certainly uh, reserve the right to, at, at some future date, 
evaluate what is going on on the property. And that would, of course, be a future type of situation. Okay, that, that helps me so to understand. So um, it's sort of the world for this project um, as of July, what is it, July 8th, 2020, um, there's no violation. So we won't get um, coming before LUC an issue raised by the interveners. And I'm assuming this stipulation is only, only binds the interveners. If another party that's not been subject to this stipulation raises a question about the um, compliance of the 1995 DNO, is it the understanding of, I'm gonna add, actually these are two separate questions. Um, let me first finish my first line of thinking. So, so that in my mind, um, as of July 8th, 2020, there are no violations of the, D, of the 1995 DNO. Would you agree with that? Is that what the stipulation says and the interveners are comfortable with that? The interveners are comfortable with that, uh, Commissioner. And I guess this is my second question for, um, I, I guess it's for all parties, that the stipulation only binds the parties um, that have signed the stipulation. If there is someone outside, any parties that the intervener may represent, a separate action may be filed, a separate order to show cause could be filed? Uh, that is correct, uh, Commissioner. We uh, certainly have no ability to bind uh, anyone other than the, um, the interveners who are identified here. Okay, I would which ask- Which would be- I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's just to be uh, clear for the for the record, you know, we, I represent uh, Daniel um, Conaheli, who's here in his uh, in his individual capacity, um, and um, and then of course South Maui Citizens for Responsible Growth and Maui Tomorrow Foundation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pierce. I'm going to ask the same questions of all the other council, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, to make sure that for the record, in my mind, it's clear. Yes. that all parties understand this stipulation only binds the parties to this stipulation. Yes. Okay. Maybe Ms. Bronster, you can, you can follow. Certainly. May have first. Mr. Chair, may I? Please. Um, yes, we believe that this stipulation uh, binds the parties to this proceeding, and we are requesting an order um, from the commission to follow. And then anyone else's rights are as laid out in law. We're not uh, attempting to affect, affect other people's rights. Nobody else is stipulating to this. Okay, very good. There are, there are implications, of course, um, if the commission does enter the order, which is what we're requesting. Uh, county. I think you've correctly stated that the document only binds the, the, sign, the signers. Um, I think it's important to note for the county, it does have an ongoing enforcement ability. In addition to the fact the county will have to be reviewing future land use approvals. And if there are issues with them um, or disagreements, it is uh, you know, possible to seek a, the, the commission's uh, advice on further on, on issues down the line if there arises a need for a declaratory ruling or something like that as the development goes. We are agreeing as of today, there are no violations. And you know, it, 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 however, I think the county has an ongoing enforcement responsibility under HRS and therefore would have to continue to um, review the project as, as the plans are submitted for approvals and continue to um, go through that responsibility. So we do believe, again, there are no, there are no violations today um, on, on the property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OP? Yes, it's OP's understanding that uh, only the parties who are signatories to the stipulation are bound by it. OK. 
Okay, and sorry, I believe you've answered it already, but just last chance, Mr. Pierce. Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that the uh, county identified the issue quite well. Um, so there are two enforcement mechanisms as we go forward, both the county and the land use commission, depending upon what happens on the on the on the petition within the petition area. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, if, if there's an opportunity, I do want to go back. There uh, there wasn't an, an, a request of the other parties, but I do want to go back, if I may, at some point and respond to something that Commissioner Okuda asked of only the petitioners with respect to one issue. Um, briefly, please do that. Well, hold on. Ms. Chang, did you, Commissioner Chang, did you have anything further? Yes, Mr. Chair, I just have one more question that I want to ask. Okay, we'll go for Commissioner Chang, then I'll provide for Mr. Pierce to and I'll see if there's any further questions from commissioners. Ms. Chang. Um, my final question is probably to the petitioners. It's in paragraph five. Um, petitioners agreed to continue to consult in good faith with lineal and cultural descendants. Um, that paragraph I feel very uncomfortable with. So what I'd like to propose is petitioners shall consult with lineal and cultural descendants, Ahamoku, as well as the larger community. I mean, I, I think what we've been hearing from the different parties throughout this process is that they've not been fully engaged in this process. So um, good faith is a very subjective term. So I'd like to say shall and that they shall provide the results of the consultation in their annual reports. I'm not too sure procedurally whether, how, whether we put that in our decision or whether that's an amendment to the stipulation. Comm Commissioner Chang, I think procedurally where we would address that is that if when we take up the request to adopt this as a motion, um, you would speak towards not adopting it as a motion, but rather adopting our own separate DNO on this matter, referencing the stipulation. Uh, well, let me just That's ask, where I think you would bring that up. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Chair. I just, based upon my uh, statement, does um, the petitioners, Ms. Bronster and Mr. Tabata, do you have any objections to the changes to the um, paragraph that they shall consult? I may I, Mr. Chair? I think I think that the the question that we are asking is for, and we've jointly asked, is for the commission to dismiss the order to show cause and lift the stay. Um, and the reason that we included these these easements uh, is because we have been listening to the community and a lot of the concerns. So it is certainly our, our anticipation uh, that we will continue to consult um, because there is you know, much to do between now and the time that we actually um, get the easements created. Um, but I think that the wording, as Mr. Pierce and others have mentioned, um, has been very carefully selected and we're, we're comfortable that we will continue um, to work with the, the parties as outlined in, in paragraph five. I'm, I'm not comfortable with making changes to that language um, right now. Okay. Um, and if, if, if I may actually, I don't think that this is the, I think our ability to try and wordsmith a stipulated agreement live via Zoom is possibly beyond our capabilities as a body. Um, especially with the number of parties involved here. So um, I, I'm, I'm willing to have the parties. Um, discussion of any motion that's made. Um, Mr. Chair, you are, you are, um, I had a hard time hearing you. I'm not asking to wordsmith. I really want to know, understand the party's intention on that paragraph. 
So for me, it's very important that I understand how far they're willing to go with respect to the consultation. Thank okay. you. Um, Mr. Tabata. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with Ms. Bronster's statements um, regarding paragraph five. Um, when I read it, paragraph five, I do not read the, the terms good faith as a, limita a limitation. I believe um, we are stating affirmatively that we agreed to continue to consult and that good faith simply um, expresses um, the, the need to have sincere discussions. So um, I don't see it as a limiting term um, and that the, the existing wording I believe is sufficient to address uh, Commissioner Chang's concern. County. Um, we, we don't necessarily have objections, but we want to make sure that, I mean, it's a stipulation that the parties had agreed to. So in making changes and wordsmithing, I think that the chair had, had raised, I think, relevant issues on that. But, you know, I think the key thing is, is there an agreement between interveners, between the interveners and the, uh, uh, and the landowners on this issue? So the county will sort of support whatever makes that happen, but at, at this stage, um, we we'll leave it up to the commission and the, the, those two parties. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. Ms. Apuna. I think OP will defer to however commission, the commission believes um, the wording should be made and what effect that will take. Mr. Pierce. Uh, I would agree with OP on that. If, if the commission would like it, we certainly are, 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 uh, uh, have absolutely no objection to the word shall okay. to replace may. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Chang, did you have further questions? No, I have no further questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner Chang. Um, Mr. Pierce, you asked the opportunity to raise one issue related to a response from P. Lani Promenade North and South. I'm giving you that opportunity now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, and this does uh, uh, relate uh, to um, a bit to the cultural issues that were just identified. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Okuda asked, he was referring to exhibit N of the stipulation, attached to the stipulation and asked, uh, will the conservation easements be irrevocable? I think we're, uh, was along the lines of the question. And in the, uh, the petitioner's response, uh, Ms. Bronster said, um, that um, this came at the 11th hour. And I just want to repeat the actual facts of this because I mean, the 11th hour is ambiguous from my perspective. Um, but just to clarify once again, the petitioners uh, before there was ever a stipulation submitted on June 26, 2020, a, um, a supplemental declaration of Robert Pointer. Uh, and Mr. Pointer is the principal of Seraphim Realty Advisors. Um, uh, which is the developer of this project. And attached to that, there's um, a string of representations, by the way, that are made by the developer there that are now admitted into evidence um, that relate to the original 1995 DNO. And also attached to it, it, it simply says, attached here to his exhibit in is a copy of the site plan for the petition area prepared by P.E. Lani and HPL. So I, I just want to mention that to clarify the record on that. That's it. Mr. Chair, thank you very much for that chance. Thank you, Mr. Pierce, for those comments. Commissioner Okuda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. This is a follow-up to uh, a line of questions that Commissioner Chang was raising, dealing with binding effect. Uh, let me ask this question, Mr. Chair, and ask if, uh, with your permission, of course, if any of the parties disagree with the statement I'm going to make. Even though only parties to a stipulation are bound by the stipulation, if the Land Use Commission adopts the stipulation as an order, the order becomes, for lack of a better technical term, law of the case, meaning in future proceedings, if, even if somebody else shows up who didn't sign the stipulation, the Land Use Commission will still be bound to follow and enforce the plain language of the stipulation. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, if I can ask if any of the parties disagree with that statement. That, that's fine. Um, I will ask the parties to be as brief as possible, beginning with um, Ms. Bronster. No disagreement. We are asking that this be an order. Mr. Tabata. Um, no disagreement. I believe uh, Commissioner Okuda is correct that the law of the case doctrine will apply um, as well as other doctrines like res judicata or collateral estoppel. Mr. Hopper. I would agree again though, subject to the ongoing obligation to continue to enforce the 1995 decision in order, meaning that there can be future violations after this agreement. I think this agreement has the site plan and the footage road and those issues dealt with, but we do understand that there are other potential issues that may arise that would be subject to enforcement. Ms. Apuna. Um, yes, we don't agree. I mean, we don't disagree with um, Commissioner Okuda's statement. Mr. Pierce. Uh, I, I just want to clarify again here. I, I would, uh, I would uh, support uh, what Mr. Hopper just said on behalf of the county. And uh, I would just add that res judicata and collateral estoppel mentioned by uh, Honua Ula partners would not apply to other parties at all. Uh, certainly wouldn't. And, um, and I actually would question whether the law of the case uh, applies. It certainly is something that is going to uh, have to be dealt with by the Land Use Commission with respect to its decision making in the future. Whether or not uh, I would actually uh, reserve uh, based upon my litigating some of those issues before whether or not and how that would affect other parties. Now, with respect to the parties that are here, certainly the stipulation speaks in terms of exactly what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, are you there? Commissioner Okuda? I, I am here. I might be frozen. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I said thank you very much and thank you to all parties for answering that question. I okay, so nothing further. Great. Thank you. Commissioners. Are there questions for any of the parties? Um, Mr. Chair, if there's no other questions, I would like to make a, a motion. Um, I, if there's no other questions, I'm willing to entertain a motion at this time. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner Wong. I would like to make a motion. Please. Uh, my motion is to adopt the stipulation as agreed to by the parties as a decision and order of the commission and authorize the chair to sign the stipulation on behalf of the commission. A motion has been made by Commissioner Wong. Is there a second? Commissioner Cabral, you're, uh, you're muted just for audio record. You're seconding the motion? Yes, I am seconding the motion. Okay, commissioners, we have a motion before us. Um, we are now in discussion on the motion. Chair, this is Commissioner Wong. I will recognize Andy. Commissioner um, Wong. Thank you, Chair. I just want to say um, on behalf of my motion, I believe that all the parties worked hard and diligently on this motion and that um, everyone that's is agreeing on this stipulation. Uh, our attorneys and know what they're talking about. And to me, if we try to change any of the language as a layman, it'll be hard at this point in time, as you stated. So I just want to leave it as is. So that's why I'm just saying it, agreeing to that stipulation as is. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wong. Commissioners, we're in discussion. Commissioner Ohigashi. Uh, do we have to include specific findings that there are no current violations of the 1995 decision order and that the new site plan for the petition area attached as exhibit N to this stipulation satisfy the last sentence of condition five of the original DN decision and order? So that's my question, and maybe my question should 
is to Mr. Morris, our attorney. Should we that, include? I was I was going to ask you if you were asking a question to Mr. Morris in terms of draft drafting, and if, Mr. Morris, if you're able to put yourself on video, that'd be helpful. Hi, this is Dan Morris. Hi, uh, my my initial take is that the adoption of the stipulation as a decision and order would consist of the findings of no current violations under the facts known to the parties. So um, my assessment is no, um, but again, that's sort of just off the top of my head at this point, this is my first meeting that I'm staffing, but I'm gonna say that the uh, language of the stipulation would consist of those findings. And so would that apply also to the other requests that they had specifically made? For example, the, 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 the that we're dismissing the ownership to show cause proceeding in its entirety, including phase two proceedings. And uh, we are stating that we're lifting the stay imposed by order granting stay of phase two. Yes. That's all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Ohigashi. Mr. Okuda, Commissioner Okuda, Commissioner Ohigashi, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to speak in favor of uh, Commissioner Wong's motion seconded by Commissioner Cabral and that we simply adopt the stipulation as is with no additional changes, no additional findings, um, just adopt it as a decision on order. And this is the reason why. Um, first of all, uh, I do agree that this is the result of extensive community participation, hard work by all the attorneys who I know are very, very capable attorneys. Um, it, 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 some people might believe that this is not a perfect solution. Uh, I dare say that whether it's in front of a land use commission or even in a court of law, there really have been almost never a case where it's a perfect solution. Why I'm speaking in favor of this motion, however, is I believe it meets the needs and the concerns of the community. And when I say community, it's not only the residents of uh, the County of Maui who testified at the hearing uh, against the, uh, for lack of a better term, the Mega Mall project, but also the, the the petitioners and the landowners who I also consider uh, with their attorneys members of the, the community here. And so it reflects, I believe, um, a democratic, thought out, um, compromise, a workout, a way of, of moving forward. As far as making specific findings, um, I would urge everyone just to vote in favor of adopting the stipulation as is, um, whether there's gonna be impact in the future about having findings or no findings, uh, it, it, it is what it is. And uh, if there's a lack of findings that might hurt someone, it might help someone, but that's for a future uh, situation. I do share the community's concern about protection of cultural resources, um, and items which we are charged under the Hawaii State Constitution to exercise a trust and public trust over, I do agree that the County of Maui and frankly, the Office of Planning and other government agencies are capable of enforcement. I'm also convinced by the fact that there has been active public participation by citizens in the community that the citizens of Maui will keep a careful watch, not only on this project, but other things that deal with our precious natural resources. So for those reasons and other good reasons in the record, uh, I ask that the motion be supported. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, um, Commissioner Okuda. Um, Commissioner Chang, followed by Commissioner Ohigashi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will, I take seriously Commissioner, Ohik, um, Commissioner Okuda's his, uh, recommendation. I mean, 
I will vote in favor of the motion. However, um, I have some real concerns about paragraph five, the good faith, because I think there is a higher standard than just good faith. Good faith can mean many different things. I think that they have an obligation, as do we as land use commissioners to ensure that there's an affirmative obligation to preserve and protect. Clearly they know who the cultural and lineal descendants are. They have come before this commission. There have been people who have even testified today that they have a connection to these lands. So um, I will have, it is my expectation that their representations of the council today, that they will consult with lineal cultural descendants and these groups will, um, will materialize and that we won't hear the same kinds of testimony in the future. But um, I am inclined to vote in favor of the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Chang. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yeah, I, I'm also inclined to vote in favor of the motion. However, I noticed that in the stipulation on page number nine, they provide to us a decision and order. And my understanding is, is that if we are to adopt the stipulation, Will we be, uh, is, it, is it correct to say that if we are adopting this, this, this stipulation, we are adopting the, the decision and order form that has been attached on page number nine? I just want that for the record because I think that if we adopt it and it's been submitted to us, that's that will how the decision and order would read. Mr. Morris. I don't understand the question. Um, if it's adopted as a decision and order of the commission, then um, then that's it. I, I don't quite understand the question. Mr. Morris, if you had a copy of the um, stipulation, if you look on page number nine, the um, parties have provided us a decision and order for as part of the stipulation. So my question is, by adopting the stipulation, we are adopting this form of the decision and order. That's correct. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I'm in support of the motion, y'all. No, I miss Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Ohigashi. Are there further comments, commissioners? I realize I'm getting a warning. My internet connection is unstable. Um, I apologize for that. Um, Commissioner Okuda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I can just respond to Commissioner Chang's concern, which I also share. Uh, but if I can say, uh, say this, I believe the real power in the decision and order, if it is adopted, is the fact that lineal descendants, people who have a real concern in the community, will will continue their their participation in this matter. And so, um, even though yes, if we were drafting the document uh, from scratch, I would probably agree with uh, the suggestions that Commissioner Chang has proposed. But I, I feel confident that given the history that, uh, of community participation here, the real strength in protecting the resources that we are charged to protect is the fact that we will not only have this written stipulation as part of the record, uh, this, and, and this, this docket runs with the land, but it's also going to be the fact that there's gonna be real community participation. So thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all the comments I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there any on or on speaking to the motion? Or other gestures? Commissioner Cabral. Yes, I wanted to speak to the motion and thank my fellow Commissioner Wong and the um, and um, Commissioner Okuda also for his um, 
legal support of the what I think Commissioner Wong and I are probably very much more since we're not lawyers, we're somewhat in the common sense field. And I'd like I'm very supportive of the the fact that the all the parties came to this agreement and I and can appreciate concerns that Commissioner Chang has that yes, there's things that will go wrong. My whole life I get paid to take care of things that go wrong all the time. So hopefully all the different parties are so much more aware through working through through the, the years and years and through the efforts with the community and with the interveners and with the um, all the different parties involved have tried to work through some of these things and they're hopefully so much more aware of the concerns of the other of the other members of the community that i'm hopeful that they'll be able to proceed to take care of this and we won't have to hear this again thank you very much i'm in favor of having this hopefully get settled thank you Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Um, Commissioner Axon, did you have anything to share? No, uh, I don't have anything further. I, I believe everybody uh, uh, mentioned that uh, the community, well, the, the, the all parties work hard on this one. And I believe because of their legal backgrounds, they considered every word that will be considered on this agreement stipulation and uh, for us to change it in the last minute uh, might you know might change uh, the whole agreement so I'm, I'm in favor of the motion thank you commissioner giovanni i also am in favor of the motion i commend the parties for their 11th hour coming together and the stipulation and i uh, think it's a workable solution so thank you okay um if there's no further comments oh we lost it uh chair sure you you're frozen frozen am i still frozen hey am i still frozen no no oh, okay back. perhaps it was the universe saying to make my remarks brief <laughs> I had the opportunity to try and mediate some of this dispute earlier. While those initial discussions did not result in a stipulation, I had the chance to observe all the parties. Um, the incredible cap incredibly capable counsel each of the parties have, as well as the commitment of all the parties, including all of the interveners who are there indeed as volunteers. So I'm very comfortable with the language and I'm very gratified that this step has been taken. This is not the end of the issue, but it is where we need to go to be able to move forward collectively. With that, Mr. Oradanker will... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the motion is to adopt the stipulation as an order and to authorize the chair to sign it on behalf of the committee. <clears throat> Commissioner Wong. Aye. Commissioner Cabral. Yes. Commissioner Axon. Commissioner Axon. Yes. No, I'll do it. <laughs> Commissioner Giovanni. Aye. Commissioner Chang. Yes. Commissioner Okuda. Yes. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yes. Chair Schroeder. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The vote passes unanimously. The motion passes. Thank you very much and congratulations to the parties. Um, our next agenda item, there was a request from Maui County for an hour's recess to prepare. Is that still the case? Mr. Hopper? I, I believe we have um, a different council representing the Department of Environmental Management in this case, and they were the party. So I would want to, if they're on the line, I'd want to check and see, with, uh, see where they are at. For lunch. Hi, this is Jennifer Olvera, uh, Deputy Corporation Counsel for DEM. 
we I don't believe um, we made that request. So we're the only thing I need to do is request maybe a 10 minute recess. I need to get the director here. He's been watching um, from his office and I just texted him. With the commission's permission, I'm going to request a 15 minute recess to 1140. Um, where we'll take up the next agenda item. Is that okay, commissioners? If not, so thank you very much to the parties on the previous docket. We will reconvene this hearing for the next agenda item, SP 97390 at 1140 AM. <laughs> Commissioner Cabral. We're awaiting Commissioner Cabral. I thought perhaps if I gave us 15 minutes, it would work, but no. There we go. Commissioner Cabral, you are back. Can you hear us? Commissioner Cabral, you're muted. Commissioner Cabral, can you hear us? You're muted. Yes, I'm muted. I can hear you though. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay, we have Commissioners Cabral, Wong, Okuda, Ohigashi, Chang, Axon, Giovanni, and myself. It is 11.42 a.m. We're going to reconvene the meeting. Um, our next agenda item is a meeting on docket number SP 97390 to consider a fourth amendment to the State Land Use Commission special permit for the proposed Central Maui Landfill Facilities Project at tax map key 23-8-003, portion of lots 19 and 20, Pu'unene, Maui, Hawaii. Will the parties on this docket please identify themselves for the record? Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. My name is Jennifer Oana, Deputy Corporation Counsel for the County of Maui. On behalf of and with the Department of Environmental Management, you may hear me refer to them as DEM. Uh, represented today by the director, Eric Nakagawa, sitting over there. Also in the room with me is DEM's project manager, Ewing Baker, and our consultant, Mark Roy from Munakio Haraka. Okay. Thank you we very much. Oh, go ahead. As a uh, you just stated on a fourth amendment to our special permit for the Central Maui Landfill Facilities. Uh, the fourth amendment has three components. Uh, we're just uh, doing appearances right oh, now. Okay, thank you. So hold your fire, we'll get to you. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, Ms. Apuna. Good morning, Chair Commissioner. Deputy Attorney General Don Apuna on behalf of the State Office of Planning here with me today is Rodney Funakoshi and Lorian Maki. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Hopper, I noticed you're still here as well. Yeah, the, the County of Maui Department of Planning is here if you have questions. Michael Hopper, Deputy Corporation Counsel. With me are uh, Deputy Director Jordan Hart and uh, Kurt Wollenhoff as well from our office. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, no other appearances, let me update the record. On March 23rd of 2009, the commission mailed the order approving the third amendment to the LUC special permit. From October 8th, 2009 through August 7th of 2018, the commission received correspondence and a photographic map 
in accordance with condition 16 of the approval and various comments from the Office of Planning on the county's draft environmental assessment and proposed amendments to the state special permit. The commission also received and acknowledged the county's correction to the third amendment. On August 5th of 2019, the county responded to the LUC comments on its proposed amendment. From February 18th of this year until June 25th, the commission received a copy of the Maui Planning Department's letter to Maui Environmental Services and advanced materials for the proposed fourth amendment to the special permit, all of which are part of the record. On June 25th, 2020, the commission received from County of Maui its letter of transmittal summarizing the documents provided to the LUC for the special permit application. On June 30th, the commission mailed the July 8th and 9th 2020 notice of agenda to the parties and to our statewide and Maui regular and email mailing lists. On July 1st, a few days ago, the commission received the Office of Planning's comment letter on this docket. Um, the procedures for this docket will be the same as the procedures for the first docket. I will call, I will acknowledge any written testimony received and the organization affiliated with the testifier if noted. I will then call for any pre-registered testifiers. I will then call for any members of the audience who are not pre-registered to testify. Each witness will be brought into the meeting as a panelist sworn in and given two minutes to testify which may be followed by questions from any of the parties. Following all of the testifying public testimony on this matter, I will give an opportunity for the parties to admit any exhibits if there are any further exhibits onto the record and then the opportunity for the petitioner to present their case. From time to time, if necessary, we will take breaks as noted previously. Are there are any questions on our procedures today from the parties? Uh, if you would orally respond, please. No question. Nope. No question. Thank you. No questions, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. No questions. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Chief Clerk, has there been any written testimony received on this docket? Mr. Chair Riley Hakura, Chief Clerk, no testimony received that I'm aware of. Okay, has anybody registered to speak as a testifier on this docket? No, Mr. Chair, no okay. registered witnesses. Okay. For the attendees who are the, in the attendee function of this Zoom meeting, if you wish to testify on this matter, please use your raise hand function and I will allow you to testify on this matter. Going once, going twice, I do not see anybody who is wishing to testify on this matter. So there is no public testimony on this matter. Um, with that, now you can proceed, um, DEM and Council, with your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are here for our fourth amendment request, uh, request for a fourth amendment to our special permit for our Central Maui landfill. <laughs> There are three components to this request for Fourth Amendment. The first component is to add approximately 40 acres of land to the special permit area. This land would be for our Central Maui Landfill Facilities Expansion Project. We have an integrated solid waste management plan and one of the goals of that plan is to reduce the county's waste stream into the landfill by at least 60%. This expansion project would allow the county to uh, improve the landfill facilities and uh, establish programs for recycling and diversion to re reduce the, the waste into the landfill. The second uh, component to this Fourth Amendment request is to uh, remove approximately 16 acres of what is in your materials uh, referred to as parcel 20. This piece of land um, is not owned by the county. 
At one time years ago, it was contemplated that the county would purchase it and use it for the landfill, but that did not happen. So this uh, uh, Fourth Amendment is requesting to remove that area of land from the special permit area. And the last, the third prong of this uh, special permit is to uh, is for a time extension to October 31st, 2028. Over the years, the county has come before this commission to request amendments for uh, land expansion as well as time extension. This time extension would coincide with the county special use permit that was approved by the Maui Planning Commission uh, for the same uses. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mark Roy from Munakio and Hiraga, who um, will give you a presentation on the project. Okay, I will need to swear you in. And do you have a PowerPoint that you're planning to share via shared screen or? Yeah. Uh, let me just share the screen. Yeah. Okay, That's hold on, good. hold on. Let me swear you in first. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Okay. So go ahead. Share the screen with the commission. Okay. Can everyone see this uh, this shared PowerPoint? No. Currently, we see. I believe the share screen options. We're not viewing your PowerPoint yet. I see the PowerPoint. Mr. Chair, I can see it too. Okay, go ahead. Okay, great. Well, good morning, Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Mark Rui with uh, the firm Munikio Hiraga. Uh, we're acting as a planning and permitting consultant for this project. I'm here today on behalf of the County of Maui. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you please speak louder? Sure. This is the court reporter. Thank you. Sure. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this important project to you all today, um, along with noted representatives of the County of Maui. We also have members of the project team in attendance with us um, and they would be happy to answer any questions the Commission may have uh, following the presentation today. Uh, so we have the engineer, a um, company called AMER. Uh, we have uh, the surveyor with us, RT Tanaka Engineers, uh, traffic consultant Fair and Piers, archaeologist scientific consultant services, and our cultural consultant, Cultural Surveys Hawaii. And as mentioned, I'm representing Munikio Hiraga. We're acting as the planning consultant for this project. The requested amendment to the state permit that's before the commission today um, is also being referred to as the Fourth Amendment, uh, relates to the addition of about 40 acres of land to the Central Maui landfill property in Punene, Maui to allow for development of what's being referred to as the Central Maui, Central Maui Landfill Facilities Project, CML Facilities Project in short. This project at its very heart, as Jennifer mentioned, is intended to implement the recommendations from the county's integrated solid waste management plan and further extend the life of the adjacent Central Maui Landfill Facility by increasing the amount of waste that is diverted away from landfill disposal. The proposed facilities project will feature an office building, an abandoned vehicle areas area, a metals processing area, an open construction and demolition material recovery area, a household hazardous waste area, and electronic waste uh, collection area and storage area as well as a warehouse and accompanying storage area. There'll also be a refuse collection office, truck parking, a maintenance area, as well as related infrastructure improvements. 
The developments of this project will essentially allow the DEM to consolidate its solid waste operations at the central Maui landfill. Due to the sustainability processes involved with the facilities, it's estimated that the project will allow the capacity of the existing landfill to be extended to about 2042. Um, this is a bit of a busy slide, but it's intended to provide a history of the permitting at the Central Maui landfill. Um, due to its location on ag land and its changing boundary configurations over time, which is uh, due to the use of uh, various cavities in the ground that are created by neighboring HCND quarrying operations over the years, the Central Maui landfill has historically been permitted by special permits. Two state special permits and one county special permit govern the existing landfill property. The first special permit, referred to as SP 86-359, was approved by the State Land Use Commission in 1986, which allowed for the opening of the landfill in 1987 on 55 acres of land. There was one subsequent amendment to this uh, special permit that was approved in 2006, and this allowed for the handling of special waste at the landfill. The other special permit, the second special permit, referred to as SP 97-390, uh, which is the, the permit that's focused for today's meeting, was approved in 1997 by the Land Use Commission and allowed for the expansion of the landfill onto about 30 acres of land. There have been three amendments to this permit approved since the early uh, 2000s. Um, these various amendments allowed for a new entrance facility, a minor expansion for an access road, an additional 41 acre expansion at the landfill, and various housekeeping actions as well, such as an interagency uh, department permit transfer to, to the DEM and a time extension of the permit to October 31st, uh, 2018. A special permit for these lands was approved in 2008 uh, by the county and remains valid until October 31st, 2028, as Jennifer mentioned. So one of the requests today is to have the, um, the expiration date for both the state and county permits um, essentially mirror uh, one another. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, the request before the Commission today uh, is a three-pronged request. The first is to include about 40 acres, it's just under 40 acres for development of the Central Maui Landfill Facilities Project on the TMK that was specified earlier. Uh, the second is a time extension of the state permit, the state special permit to October 31st, 2028. And then the third as Jennifer had mentioned, the removal of a portion of TMK 3-8-003 parcel 20, which is not owned by the county. Uh, for, for orientation purposes, I, I think most people know where the Central Maui landfill um, is. This is a map showing its location along uh, Pulehu Road, and it's just uh, located to the south east of, of Kahului on Maui. Uh, the shaded area on this slide uh, depicts the 40 acres that we're, we're talking about today for the CML facilities project. And I'll just point to the, um, the cross-hatched uh, parcel. This is parcel 20, and a portion of this parcel is being requested for removal uh, from the permit. So the, um, the entirety of the site that's delineated by the dashed line on this graphic um, approximates the, the limits of the Central Maui Landfill facility. Um, this is uh, a copy of uh, the aerial photo that's on file with the Land Use Commission. Um, this depicts the, um, the existing condition of the area, obviously changing uh, year by year but uh, it shows the area that's covered by the special permits for the Central Maui Landfill. As you can see, there's a buffer along Pulehu Road, 
as well as um, you can see some of the neighboring quarrying operations um, to the north as well. Um, the yellow line, importantly uh, for, for the discussion today, delineates the area of the uh, landfill that's permitted by the special permit that is uh, being discussed today. This next slide uh, is, a, is a survey, an accurate survey of the Central Maori landfill that was completed during project planning for this particular project. Um, as you can see, there are two colored, colored areas on this slide. The uh, pink area is the 40 acre CML facilities project site that the county would like to have added to this particular permit. And then the uh, yellow area identifies um, it's about just over 16 acres of land that's within the permit that uh, the county would like to be removed um, as it no longer owns the land. It's worth noting at this point that during the process of preparing this survey um, and accompanying meets and bounds description, um, the existing permitted area was determined to be uh, 72.927 acres. Um, which actually brings me to the next slide. Um, this slide is intended to summarize the area covered by this particular special permit and showing how it will increase um, with the actions that are proposed today. So the first line item here, the existing permitted area based on the survey is um, ju just under 73 acres, so 72.927. Um, the area to be removed from parcel 20 is 16.841 acres. And then the CML facilities project area, which is an addition, is 39.573 acres based on the survey. And that would bring the total permitted area for this permit um, up to 95.659 acres. And uh, we note that that's uh, an expansion of about um, 23 acres or um, more precise 22.732 acres. Um, in terms of process, just a bit of background for, for the Commission. The planning process for this project actually started about five years ago with the initiation of the state environmental review process. Um, there was a chapter 343 environmental assessment that was prepared by the county. Um, and the intent of that document is to uh, evaluate the potential impacts of the proposed project. Um, there was a finding of no significant impact determination rendered at the conclusion of that process uh, and was actually published in August of last year. Um, that determination uh, was, was unchallenged. Uh, following completion of the EA process, um, a public hearing was then held on December 10th last year uh, before the Maui Planning Commission. And the amendments to both the state and county special permits uh, were taken up at that meeting. Uh, the Planning Commission at that meeting took action and approved um, both amendments, um, which is why we're here before the commission today. Um, very briefly, this is a conceptual site plan for the facilities project. Um, it shows the proposed configuration of the new facilities that I mentioned earlier on the uh, 40 acre site. As you can see, it's, uh, it's an interesting L-shaped site. Um, and you, you can see the existing central Maui landfill facility um, is adjacent on the southern boundary of this site. And again, for orientation purposes, Pulehu Road runs along the western boundary of the site. Kahului is situated nearby to the north northwest. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this project really seeks to implement the recommendations of the county's solid solid waste management plan, the integrated solid waste management plan, uh, to consolidate DEM's existing solid waste management operations and to achieve a diversion of um, substantial waste streams away from the existing landfill. There are a couple of important land use designations that come into play for this particular request today. 
Um, the 40 acre facilities property was purchased from AMB actually by the county in 2012. And as you can see here on this graphic, the majority of the site is actually designated by the Maui Island Plan, the county's Maui Island Plan, which is part of the general plan framework uh, for the county. It's designated in pink here as an urban growth uh, area. So designated for future, uh, uh, future growth um, within the county. Um, important agricultural lands is the second important designation uh, that we wanted to spend a bit of time on during the presentation today. Um, the county does also recognize that uh, about 22 acres or just over half of the facility site was designated as important agricultural lands as a result of a 2009 uh, declaratory petition that was filed by the previous landowner, um, AMB, prior to it being purchased um, by the county. Um, those special permits are, are allowed on, on IAL lands to our understanding. Pre-consultation with the Office of Planning and also the Department of Agriculture is a requirement that is set forth in the Land Use Commission's rules. Um, as such, early notification of the county's request to amend this special permit um, was provided to these two agencies early during the um, initial phases of the EA preparation process. All comments received from Office of Planning and uh, Department of Agriculture were uh, thoroughly reviewed and responded to and actually incorporated as part of the final EA for the project. The 22 acre IAL portion of the project site um, amounts to about 0.08% of the um, approximately 27,000 acres of IAL lands that were designated um, on Maui. This uh, next slide shows those lands, the 27,000 acres in spreading across the Central Valley on Maui uh, quite extensively. Um, <clears throat> these are currently designated as IAL lands and um, noteworthy here is the red outline um, in the center of the slide. This is the uh, 40 acre project site that we're discussing as part of the review today, um, 22 acres of which are designated IAL. The county feels that the public benefit to the community that will result from use of this uh, small amount of IAL land outweighs the value of preserving this land um, for future agriculture. And you know, we mentioned that particularly given the substantial increase in vacant agricultural lands that has resulted in recent years with the closure of sugarcane activities on Maui. I believe those, the, those um, seeds back in 2016. Um, however, we do want to note that uh, the county is um, agreeable to Office of Planning's proposed condition that a petition to remove the 22 acres from the 2009 declaratory order be uh, filed within a year of approval of this permit amendment. Um, this, this final map really kind of zooms in back down to the site. Again, you've got the L-shaped facility site depicted on this uh, slide in black. Um, you can see the portion that is designated IAL, uh, which is about 22 acres. And um, as you can see, most of the site, uh, again, is within the urban growth boundary uh, of the Maui, Maui County's uh, general plan. I believe it's just about 38 acres is covered um, by the urban growth boundary designation. But we wanted to show this just with both important designations layered onto a single slide uh, for the commission's reference. Um, in closing, um, the county has evaluated the proposed fourth amendment in relation to um, all applicable criteria that uh, is set forth in both Hawaii Revised Statutes Chapter 205 and 205A, as well as the Land Use Commission's 
um, own administrative rules that relate to special permits. Um, a comprehensive consistency discussion was provided um, in terms of these decision-making criterion in the uh, final EA. It's actually contained in chapter three of the final EA document. And now uh, before wrapping up, just to revisit the three pronged request before the commission today uh, is for a fourth amendment to state special permit number SP 97-390 uh, to include approximately 40 acres for the development of the Central Maui Landfill Facilities Project. The second is for a time extension of this permit to October 31st, 2028, again to mirror the same expiration date of the county special permit. And the third is the removal of a portion of uh, parcel 20 that is no longer owned by the, was not owned by the county. Um, they seek to remove that portion of land from the permit. And um, in summary, the total permitted area should, should these amendments be approved would be 95.659 acres. Uh, and that's documented on, the, on a recent survey that was actually requested by LUC staff as part of this process. So with that, on behalf of the county and the rest of the team that's on the line, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to present this project before you today and the permit amendment. Um, and we'd be happy to respond to any questions that the commission may have during its review and deliberations today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, and if you'll stop sharing the screen. Sure. for now. Commissioners, are there questions for the county? Commissioner Axon? Oh. Commissioner Cabral? Yes, I have a question for the county. Um, in all of this, and I, I'm not sure if I catch, caught all of it, but um, Public hearings. I know. I know that no one uh, is uh, came today to um, testify for or against this project, but I wanted to just review in your county what kind of public knowledge information, what kind of public notice were you, are you required to put out there, and and so in other words, is the public aware of this expansion request? Are they, you know, I mean so often there's going to be some neighbor who's unhappy about it and it would normally be here telling us so so does the public is the public aware and what was your requirements and what have you done public meetings public notices i just want to know how well the rest of the world in maui know what's going on thank you thank you commissioner cabral go ahead Thank you for the question. Um, I can certainly uh, take a shot at responding and if um, the planning department wishes to add, um, they can do so. Um, this, as I mentioned, has, has been um, quite a process. We've been going for about five years now with the environmental assessment and also the um, permit amendment applications. Um, to, to Commissioner's question, there, there were notification requirements as part of the um, application to amend uh, the, the county special permit. So uh, there was certainly notification of the uh, general public of this project as it worked its way through the process. Um, there were also, you know, a couple of key steps during the environmental assessment process where um, we published a draft EA through the State Office of Environmental Quality Controls website and also the final EA, um, uh, the draft EA of which allowed for opportunity for public review and, uh, and comments. So there have certainly been several opportunities for public review along the way. And the Planning Commission public hearing that we had um, provided opportunities for public testimony as well. Uh, okay, my second part to that question would be then did the public, did any members of the public show up at these hearings or send you testimony or present an opinion? I mean, have you gotten any feedback from the public? I'm going to have to check my records. Um, planning department, I don't know. Do you have that available? I don't see them on. 
Um, no, Mr. Hopper is there. Um, I think it was a question for planning, Mr. Hopper. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. What was the question about? Regarding the, qu the question was what did was basically was there opposition to this um, and the DEM deferred to planning. Um, now uh, I'm I'm being told by our planner staff planner here for Wallenhop and uh, Deputy Director Jordan uh, Hart that there was no negative testimony they received. You also have as part of your record the, um, the, the minutes of the planning commission meetings, the department staff report that would have included any written testimony. That's correct, Kurt, right? Yes. All the written testimony. And so that's, uh, that's what I'm being told. Again, the, the record is there. And I, if we, you've got questions, we can respond. But that's, the, that's what I'm being uh, told. Okay. Hey, thank you there's very also, much. Very interesting. Also, thank you. Oh, sorry. There's also comments in the EA that Mr. Oh, okay. to, uh, to to refer to. Is that it, Commissioner Cabral? Yes, I'm. I'm satisfied that there's not a big movement. Mr. Pierce isn't here. I mean, yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioners Chang, then Okuda, then Ohigashi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate the thorough presentation. I just have a few questions. One is a follow-up to Commissioner Cabral's question. Um, in addition to the public testimonies, have there been any complaints filed by members of the public on um, the operations, for example, dust or debris that you are aware of? Not sure. I'm going to have to uh, defer to our director, Eric Nakagawa. Um, hi, Eric Nakagawa. Um, as, as far as uh, dust and nuisance and all that kind of stuff, um, basically we're... I'm sorry, you need to speak up. Excuse me, Eric, you need to speak up. I can't hear you, though. Oh, it's on the TV. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good? Okay. Um, so as far as um, dust, nuisances, and that kind of stuff, that's all pretty much covered underneath our um, Department of Health um, operating permit and that kind of stuff. So those kind of stuff is mitigated through um, on-site water troughs and um, dust control and that kind of means. Um, it's in the middle. Uh, I don't know if all of you are aware, in the middle of basically plantation, I guess, area, or used to be sugarcane. So there's real no residential, any type of commercial development anywhere around us. So maybe that's why we've never had any um, complaints about that kind of stuff in, in the past. Um, as far as litter control and that kind of stuff, there's standard protocols of by DOH of um, uh, uh, they're, what are they called? Fence? What are those things called? The big fence? Oh, the litter fence. They're called litter fences, and so that traps any type of things that might blow, that kind of stuff. Um, so hopefully uh, that answers your question. Actually, that does. That's very helpful. So you said um, there's, the how far is the nearest residence? Uh, um, if I may, I I neglected to swear in the director. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he jumped in. He swore from the testimony you just gave, and anything subsequently is the truth? Yeah. Sorry. Thank, you. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Chang. Yeah. So, how far is the nearest residence from the landfill? <laughs> Let us. I have to guess maybe about five miles, but the director is checking um, on his laptop. Okay. Oh. A good guess is okay. 
Oh, five miles. It's, quite a long it's way. over a couple of miles. Let's okay. see. I'm just trying to use Google Map right here. <laughs> um, if if I may, um, Commissioner, since since this is a special permit proceeding, um, it'd be good if your questions are phrased in terms of what is on the record before us, because we're not oh. conducting additional evidentiary proceedings here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay, no. Thank you for the reminder, Mr. Chair. So, um, all right. So let me just ask you this question. Um, what is the duration of the landfill? What's, I know you're on your fourth amendment. The original order says 10 years. So what's the duration of the landfill? So in terms of uh, how long we expect the landfill to have capacity? Yes, yes. Um, Right now, with no expansion or diversion of um, waste, um, it is expected that we will fill up that capacity by 2026. With so, uh, the extension project, it would um, increase it to about 2042. Yeah. Um, and again, sorry for DEM. If given that this is a review of a special permit, if you could refer to the record. We're not trying to expand the record here. So. Yes, no, um, those, uh, the things I just said, that is in the record already. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the final EA as well as yeah. the department's uh, report and recommendation. Thank you. All right, and the final question is, um, where in the record, um, it does, does it state in the record anywhere where the county has a responsibility to restore the site after, um, the life of the landfill? In terms of um, uh, closing the landfill and making sure everything is. Um, yes, any kind of site rest. Yeah, this is site restoration. Is there anything in the record that requires the county to restore the landfill? Um, you know, so that um, at least my, my, you know, in Honolulu, you cover it, but is there anything in the record what your responsibility is on restoring the site? Or you? No, it's just us according to the. I yeah. don't believe in the current I, record it, it states um, that. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. you. I'm sorry, I didn't oh, hear you. Oh. Um, Ms. Jen Oano, all she's referring to is that I, she doesn't know if it's stated in the record because we're keep referring back to the record, but in general, I can answer the question if you chair so pleases. <laughs> so just to, to be clear, I'm not trying to be difficult or a stymie discussion, but um, on special permit matters, the action is taken by the County Planning Commission in this case, the Maui County Planning Commission. And we are then have the opportunity, unless I'm corrected, to either approve, um, approve with modifications, deny or remand the proceedings. So the question from the commissioner is in the record, um, the combined record in front of us, which includes the EA, is there a discussion of um, what happens as part of the closure process of the landfill? And those might not be in the record. Those might be under the conditions of the federal permits that apply rather than this record, but just specify where that information is. I don't believe um, that it's in the record in front of you. Okay. So I'm sorry, I, I'm having a hard time hearing. Did you say you don't believe it's in the record? In front of you, yes. Okay. You do need to project. County. All right. I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioner Okuda, followed by Commissioners Ohigashi and Giovanni. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, to follow up on Commissioner Chang's uh, question, can you please point to where in the record is there evidence that after the uh, term, whenever that is, of the use of the property as a landfill, including including 
whatever additional uh, uses are being proposed in the special permit, that agriculture would be possible on that parcel of property. Where in the record does it show that? So basically, you know, round Please identify yourself before speaking. Oh, Eric Nakagawa, director, PM. So in a roundabout way, in the record, it states that we will comply with all of the state and federal permit regulations, I guess. In, um, Mr. Nakagawa, I, I'm sorry, but you have to project because I couldn't hear the last part. And if I'm yelling, I apologize for that, but I'm trying to make sure that the court reporter hears me because we need to have a complete record here. So if you can please uh, repeat your answer, please. So it, I believe in the actual application and the permit process, it does say that, um, that the County of Maui DM will comply with all of that federal and state regulations um, as far as the operating permits and that kind of stuff. So all of that is covered already under DOH guidelines and EPA guidelines. Where in the record is there evidence showing the specific type of agriculture that can be conducted on the site after the term of the special permit ends? Just say that you Commissioner, I, I don't believe that is in the record before you. Would it be fair to say then that the record that has been presented to us at this point in time indicates that property will be used for non-agricultural purposes and the record just does not show any evidence that the property will thereafter be able to be used for agricultural purposes. At, at, commissioner, at, at, at the risk of stepping out of my role as chair, is the requirement that the property be used for agriculture or that the property be able to be used for uses appropriate to the agricultural district? Um, actually, I, I want to... Uh, okay. Well, if they want to answer it either way, that's fine. I just want to know what their view of the record shows. Sorry for the interruption, please proceed. Uh, uh, DEM, do we have an answer, please? If, if I can have just a moment um, with DEM. Um, Go ahead. We're trying to find an answer for you. Chair, this is Commissioner Wong. Yes. You know, um, since DM is consulting with each other, yes, it would be a good time to have a lunch break. <laughs> okay, I was not sure um, how long this might take. Um, I was perhaps overly optimistic that we might complete um, prior to. Um, to needing to take a lunch break. So it is 1229. 
I'm going to suggest that we take a 45 minute break for lunch. That would give DEM the chance to make sure they have full access to their record before them. And we can then take up the remainder of this item at that time. 45 minute break is proposed. Commissioners, is that acceptable? Okay, um, we will reconvene at 1.15 p.m. If anybody wants bologna sandwiches. And Where is that? That's um this looks like on our side. Uh new. Uh, don't get out much nowadays. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for taking me there. <laughs> Happy. Thought I should find an island appropriate background. <laughs> so uh, is 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 that retroactive swearing in? Does that work all the time? <laughs> well, we could have asked him the question again. Okay, it's one fifteen, and we have Commissioners Wong Cabral, Kohikashi, Chang, Axon. <laughs> Um, Giovanni and Scheuer, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gary. Eight. So, Gary. Um, Gary? Mr. Morris, you're available. Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay, and Ms. Where's Riley? Where's Riley? I'm here. Great. Okay, let's let the fun continue. We're back on the record and um, Ms. Commissioner Okuda had posed a question to DEM. DEM, uh, uh, this is Gary Okuda. Shall I try to repeat or maybe rephrase my question? Would that be helpful? Sure, thank you. Okay, can you please tell me where in the record does it show what agricultural use of the property will be possible after the end of the term of the special permit? Okay, uh, I don't believe that, that is in the record. However, if you look at the record exhibit two um, in the materials, uh, this is appendix A of the draft EA which contains the, all, of the special, uh, all of the state special permits. If you look at the first special permit, we received SP 86-359, the findings of fact, conclusion of the law decision and order on page five. Um, it says under conformance to special permit guidelines number 22, the use of an existing quarry site provides a logical and economic location for a sanitary landfill. Upon the closing of the landfill, the land could be utilized for agricultural production. As such, establishment of a sanitary landfill at the property is not contrary to the objective sought to be accomplished by the land use law and regulation. I do want to point that out. Um, it is the, the first state uh, a special permit and not the one we're actually talking about, but that is in the record. Um, furthermore, with regard to the conditions that the Mali Planning Commission um, put on this project, um, condition number four says full compliance with all applicable governmental requirements shall be required. Um, it also says condition number 14 that full compliance with the requirements of the state's Department of Health for sanitary landfill operation shall be rendered. Um, I also do want to point out um, in the record, uh, this is exhibit six, the Department of Planning's report and recommendation on page 20, um, the first full paragraph. It does say facility, the facilities proposed are therefore considered to be long-term and the DEM does not anticipate the land returning to agricultural cultivation 
that would necessitate a remediation plan. Okay, so the record indicates that, I'm sorry, can you read that last sentence that you read? Um, the, the facilities proposed cons are considered to be long-term and the DEM does not anticipate the plan, the land returning to agricultural cultivation that would necessitate a remediation plan. Okay, and that statement is in the record as you identified, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, the record indicates that the, the land which is uh, subject to this proposed additional special uh, permit is uh, considered or categorized as prime agricultural land, correct? And the record also indicates an ALISH that is uh, acronym A-L-I-S-H rating, correct? Yes. What does the record indicate the ALISH uh, rating is? If I, if I can have one moment, please. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to uh, cause a delay here. Let me just ask you whether, the, uh, was it your recollection that the record indicates it's basically uh, a higher prime type of rating? The, in other words, the Alish rating is consistent with the, the uh, categorization of the land as being prime agricultural. Correct, yes. So would it be fair, and if it's not fair to say this, tell me it's not fair, okay? That the county of Maui essentially intends to make permanent non-agricultural use of the property which is proposed to be in this expanded uh, special permit area. Yes. And on the lands that are already designated IAL, important agricultural lands, um, I'm, I'm looking at page 15 of, uh, which is the PDF page 15 of volume one of the environmental assessment, which is a map or site plan showing various uh, uses and structures uh, to be or propose for the parcel, would it be fair to say that these uses or parcels are intended to also be placed on parts of the parcel which are designated IAL? Correct. May I ask you this then, where in the record was there a discussion of the Hawaii Supreme Court's admonition or warning about the use of a special permit instead of a boundary amendment? And just so that uh, I make my question clear, let me read two separate sentences from the Hawaii Supreme Court case called Neighborhood Board Number 24 versus State Land Use Commission that's found at 64 Hawaii 265, a 1982 case. And if I can first read the first sentence, then I'll read the second sentence, then I'll ask you, can you point to the where in the record there's a discussion or consideration of this admonition or warning from the Hawaii Supreme Court? Okay, the first sentence is found at 64 Hawaii at page 272. The Pacific Second location is 639 Pacific Second at 1102 to 1103. And I quote, as courts have repeatedly recognized, unlimited use of the special permit to effectuate essentially what amounts to a boundary change 
would undermine the protection from piecemeal changes to the zoning scheme guaranteed landowners by the more extensive procedural protections of boundary amendment statutes. And let me read you the second sentence from that case, which is found at uh, the Hawaii Reports at page 272, Pacific Third at page 1103. And I quote, we do not believe that the legislature envisioned the special use technique to be used as a method of circumventing district boundary amendment procedures to allow the ad hoc infusion of major urban uses into agricultural districts. Can you please tell me where in the record there's a discussion that these two admonitions or warnings by the Hawaii Supreme Court about using the special permit instead of a boundary amendment where that was considered or discussed in the record. Because I kind of read through the minutes, which is really complete and you know, it's essentially a verbatim transcript of what was considered uh, at planning commission. So um, can you point to where in the record these admonitions or warnings by the Hawaii Supreme Court were considered? I don't believe that that was in the record. Can you please point to any explanation in the record why the county did not proceed by way of a boundary amendment instead of using the special permit or in place of using a special permit procedure? Um, I have to find that and maybe um, my people can help me find that. But with regard to uh, the, the Central Maui landfill, um, we are pretty much following um, the adjacent uh, property owner and leasee's actions. They are doing quarry operations so where they go and where they're done, we follow uh, them. So it does make sense um, at some point in time that we go in for a boundary amendment, but at this time, that land is not owned by the county and we have no um, control over where they're going to uh, continue with their quarry operations. So at this time, it does in one sense, it makes sense for us to continue with the special permit uh, amendments, um, but it does make sense in the long term to discuss going in for a boundary amendment, which the department has. Um, I have to find where that is in the record, but um, you know, that's basically where we are. We have discussed it. Um, it, it is you know, on our minds, but at this point, um, you know, we're following where the, where the quarry goes. Is there anything in the record which indicates an emergency or exigent circumstances which required the county of Maui to proceed by special permit and not by a boundary amendment? Let me give you an example. The commission uh, approved a request for a special permit brought by the city and county of Honolulu instead of a boundary amendment uh, in, a, in a situation where there was an argument made that because certain deadlines couldn't be met under a federal consent decree, it may place the city and county at risk. So I'm not saying that's the only example, but is there anything in the record which indicates a reason or exigent or emergency circumstances why the county of Maui could not have proceeded by a boundary amendment instead of a special permit proceeding. I, I don't believe there's exigent, exigent circumstances like that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, where the quarry is going and we follow. Um, we wouldn't really be able to I mean, we could, but to get a boundary amendment, we would have to um, think about 
what will happen in the future that we really don't have control over. Um, if we get a boundary amendment for a certain you know, parcel or parcels of land that may never become um, part of the Central Maui landfill. But you already anticipate that this parcel that you're seeking a special permit for, that you are really going to impose on the parcel urban uses, correct? Correct. And those urban uses are probably going to be permanent, correct? Correct. And I'm not saying that your plan is not a good plan. I, I think it's really forward looking as far as a disposal of waste, it's, it seems to be well thought out. Um, I, I just want to be sure that we don't get overturned and a good plan falls by the wayside because procedures might not have been followed. Do you agree? No. Uh, let me withdraw that question. Um, is, is there anything in the record which indicates that there was a discussion or consideration of the requirements of Hawaii Revised Statute Section 205-50. That's the section that deals with the procedures which are mandatory to be followed if IAL land is being withdrawn from an IAL designation. Is there anything in the record which indicates there was a discussion or consideration of whether or not the requirements of HRS Section 205-50 were considered, and if they were considered, why that section was deemed not to be applicable. So I, right now I can point you to the Department of Planning's um, staff uh, report and recommendation and that I believe starts at page 16. I'm just making sure. Um, it's also in the final EA. I don't have that page number. Um, 70, 78 in the final EA. Excuse me for a second. I think I found it here. And so your contention is that part of the record discusses adequately the requirements for possible application or non-application of HRS section 205-50. Yes, and that discussion was more towards um, analyzing it in terms of granting the special permit as opposed to um, getting the um, reclassification or the boundary amendment. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner Okuda. Um, Commissioner Ohigashi followed by Commissioner Giovanni. I've been looking at, this is Leo Higashi, I'm looking at this conceptual site plan on exhibit seven, page 10. And I, I noticed that there's a, a key over there and it says one office, 8,000 square foot. And that, that relates to what is one on the conceptual map, right? Is that right? The M? Yes. Yeah. And I know this number two is an abandoned vehicles area, two acres, and that would be number two. Correct. Okay. So, and then I look down on page 15. And I noticed that one and parts of two is in the is, is in the 
important agricultural lands designated area. Is that right? Correct. How much, what other items are in the areas that designate important agricultural lands? One moment, please. Commissioner Ohigashi, this is Mark Rory with Minikio Hiraga. I'll do my best to, to answer your question. You don't have an overlay showing the site plan and the IAL boundary, but looking at the two, the, 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 two the site plan against the boundary of the IAL, if you're looking at the conceptual site plan, it's that L shape, right? Um, most, most of the facilities are uh, to the north west on the um, the axis of the L shape that goes along Pulehu Road. Most of that is in the IAL. Um, the bottom of the L that's adjacent to the landfill, uh, a portion of that is outside of IAL. Okay, okay, so I, I just want to be clear. One, we know one and two. What about number three, metals processing area? I believe it's in. Yeah. yeah. Number four, open construction and demolition material recovery. I believe that's um, a portion is in, a portion is maybe out. Okay, so we know that one, two, three, four, part of four is in the IAL. Correct. And, and not is it in the record or do you understand uh, does DEM understand that when you designate an important agricultural land that that designation prevents except by I believe super majority or under certain, uh, under other circumstances, to to initiate a boundary amendment to change it to urban. So, uh, Commissioner Ohigashi, you know, it's, we fully respect important agricultural lands, but for special permits, um, <clears throat> special permits are allowed on important agricultural land. Mm -hmm. And when there is a request to do so, <coughs> there are requirements contained in the HRS to consult with Office of Planning and Department of Agriculture and then incorporate their comments um, into uh, our, our final um, uh, environmental assessment and, and reports. And so in this case, we did early on consult with them um, as well as um, throughout this process. And um, on July 1st, 2020, they did send the Land Use Commission a letter that said that they do support this fourth amendment. Um, they also discussed the IAL uh, lands in this project and um, suggested an avenue for mitigation. So what they suggest is that if so approved, um, within one year after approval of this fourth amendment, that DEM comes back to the Land Use Commission uh, to request a declaratory order to um, uh, remove the 22 acres from IAL designation. I, th I thought it was a two-part mitigation. Either do it that or come with some kind of mitigation plan. Is that right? A remediation plan. I think that was your recommendation. But besides that, that, that wasn't my question. My question was really this. Was really this. My understanding of IL is that, uh, important agricultural land, is that the 
Petitioner in that case, in, when you want important agricultural land, you are um, allowed to designate with commission approval certain amount of agricultural land. And if you designate a certain amount, 50% over, your other lands cannot be design, redesignated. Has any part of the record focused in on the original petition to designate this agri important agricultural land to determine that if it's reverted back, would have an effect on the ability or the ability of the county or whoever or land use commission to designate more of that original petitioner's agricultural land as important agricultural lands? No, that is not in the record. Has it been done to make that determination whether or not the a declaratory order taking this out of important agricultural lands would have an effect on the original landowners uh, rights and abilities? Because essentially you get the other 50% saying that you, we're not, we cannot do it anymore on the other 50%, but we can do it on a fifth. On this, because you've already designated a certain amount agri uh, important agricultural lands. So if you take out some, it may affect that original designation. And we can designate some of his, that original petitioner's other important agricultural lands. So I believe um, uh, this is Mr. HRS-2550G. Um, does have an avenue for doing that. Um, and it, it is basically uh, going to the legislature uh, to provide prior authorization by adoption of a concurrent resolution. So are you, have you gotten a prior concurrent re resolution to resolve this matter? No, we have not. No. The other question that I have is that, given that there are important agricultural lands, why would you place what is called permanent structures as well as metal processing plants and places where you place your, your abandoned vehicles where, there, where, where it's known to have oil leakage and uh, affecting these lands, why would you put those activities on those lands, if they're designated important agricultural lands? So oh, it has always been the plan that um, once this special permit, if approved, it is approved that the DEM would take steps to uh, remove the IAL designation from these 22 acres. Um, so. But, but you're assuming that we would grant that. Shouldn't well, we be, shouldn't, shouldn't the requests come first to remove it, to support the special use permit rather than after the fact? That would be a good idea, um, but it's kind of, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. Well, I don't think it's what comes first, the chicken or the egg. It's just the question is that if you're saying, if we're saying, if important agricultural lands are so important that we had to designate them and gave the landowner a benefit from that designation. Shouldn't that designation be removed first before a special use permit is granted? That's Mr. Norigashi, I'd like to recognize Mr. Hopper. Okay. I didn't intend to interrupt. I just had a, a clarification on an earlier question. I don't want to interrupt you if you're-, you're Oh, okay. I thought you were- Sorry. I thought you were trying to interrupt. Um, I, um, I was just trying to address a question if you had it. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Mr. Ohigashi. I just want- I just- I, I, I don't look at it as a chicken and egg argument. That's my, that's my statement. I look at it as a, as a process that if if there's important agricultural lands, shouldn't that be 
removed or shouldn't that be determined whether or not that designation will continue before a special use permit is granted? Uh, Commissioner, um, I'll ask Mark Roy to answer your questions regarding the process. I'm Mark Rory with uh, Mimikio Hiraga. Sorry, I'll speak loudly so you can hopefully hear, hear us okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of speak to the process a bit. Um, as I kind of mentioned in the presentation, you know, this is, has been quite a, quite a long, lengthy process for the county up until um, today. Um, it's been about five years in terms of the EA process and the processing of the um, special permit amendment applications. but. What I did want to just point to was um, at the beginning of the process, there was um, you know, early consultation with um, the respective agencies. Um, and there, there was a decision to, to pursue an amendment to the existing special permit uh, for the landfill. And so the county then proceeded to prepare an environmental assessment analyzing the potential impacts of the project and the special permit amendment request. Um, the EA process took several years to go through uh, for various reasons. You know, there were a lot of technical studies that were, were done and we took it through the public review process. Um, when the EA was, was completed, then, you know, we went through the public hearing with the planning commission to review the uh, proposed amendments. Um, what, one thing I did want to just note for the record, which I, I think is, is important when you do look back over the five years, is that there is a provision within the State Land Use Commission's rules where um, if an applicant is requesting a special permit on IAL lands, that they have to specifically write to the Office of Planning and the Department of Agriculture and notify those two agencies of the proposed um, action. That, that was most certainly done by the county at the very beginning of the EA process, you know, probably three, four years ago now. And um, you know, we certainly looked at those comments and responded as, as, as we felt was appropriate to do so. Um, so, you know, fast forward to the end of, end of the process and, you know, we're very happy uh, to, to be able to present this project before the Commission today. Um, there is a letter that was issued by um, the Office of Planning uh, very recently on July 1st. Um, and I think the Commission will probably hear the Office of Planning's position statement. Um, sometime during review of this item today, but there is a proposed condition that has been set forth by the Office of Planning. Um, and this kind of goes back to the question of why didn't you do the removal first? Um, well, we did consult with the agencies and we went through the appropriate process that was dictated by the agencies to request the amendment to the special permits. And um, so, now we have a proposed condition that I think Office of Planning is offering uh, in terms of uh, support for the recommended amendment. And I believe that the county is in support of that, of that condition to file a petition with the Land Use Commission to request um, removal of that 22 acres. Sorry, can you not, one moment, um, we can hear you speaking in the background, your colleagues in the same room. It's coming up on the mic, so it's hard to hear you. Thanks. Okay, I was I was just finishing. I'll remove my face mask as well. Sorry, I was just finishing um, with just pointing to the Office of Planning's July first, twenty twenty letter that has been reviewed by the county, and I believe the county's um, position statement supports the proposed condition to within a year of um, if the commission does choose to approve this amendment, the county would proceed to file a petition to request removal of those 22 acres because the county does agree that it, it's not appropriate for that designation to be in place given the uses that are proposed um, in, in the site plan for the facilities project. So I just wanted to offer up that um, kind of summary of the process 
has been quite a long road to get here and we certainly consulted you know at every step of the way in accordance with the regulations commissioner Higashi. well I'm, I'm just trying to follow up the the state or the, the office of planning has two recommendations one is either to have it removed or have a remediation plan for the IAL designated lands. From what I understand is one of the, uh, or implementing for IAL designated to be returned to agriculture after the life of the landfill. It seems to me that, it seems to me that those, that you're permanently going to use this as a landfill, that this is going to be a permanent facility it's going to be forever. So once, if we give you this special use permit, we're locked into the position to say that the IAL designation should be taken off. It should be removed without having it to be reviewed under the proper, um, the proper criteria for that for removal of the designation. Now, if you're telling me that you're willing to risk coming before us and saying that, hey, we cannot consider uh, the, if we grant the special use permit, uh, if we do grant the special use permit, it will be subject to uh, you removing it from the IAL, as an IAL, then you, you, is the county gonna take the risk that we may say, we don't think you meet the criteria of removing it from my IL, from the IL designation. That's that's my that's my question to you guys. Is that if we if if you lose that that IL, then the special use permit is essentially gone. Isn't that right? So first of all, um, Commissioner Ohigashi, um, you know, you're, you've mentioned if the, removing the IAL and the permanent um, use of the landfill. So um, with regard to the IAL lands, that is not going to be used for landfilling. Um, the IAL lands will have those, you know, structures on it. They are not, um, you know, uh, they're not permanent? And, well, they're permanent, but they're not, um, I guess, uh, you know, buildings in terms of they can never be removed. So I wouldn't say that we're locking the, the land use commission into a certain course of action. Um, the well, land that our IAL lands are not the actual land fill part. It, it's the facilities and structures that are uh, ancillary to the landfill. So the landfill part will can be used and returned and re used for agricultural purposes. However, the IAL part cannot because they'll be used for permanent urban use. Is that right? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Oh, from what I understand, your answer was that the landfill portion can be returned to agricultural use and remediated, but the uses on the IAL lands are going to be permanent, so it could never be reme remediated for use for agricultural purposes. Is that right? No, that, that's not what I'm saying at all. Okay, um, so what are you saying? The lands could be remediated even better, I would argue. Because so, surface um, development, not subsurface development. Okay, so is it your plan then to remediate the IAL designated lands to agricultural use. So, 
that that wouldn't be the plan. The plan would be to go back in front of the Land Use Commission to request removal um, of the designation for those 22 acres. And to permanently take them, take it out of agriculture use? And, and Commissioner, I mean- Was that, a, you nodded your head for the record, that was a yes? Yes, I, yes. Okay, so I, I just wanted to be sure because if you're, if you're doing that, I'm, well, I like uh, Commissioner Okura question whether or not a boundary amendment should be proper here. I don't have any more questions. Thank you, Commissioner Ohigashi. Um, Commissioner Giovanni, I will also note that I have some questions that have arisen in the course of this hearing. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, let me just generally say that, you know, land, uh, landfill operations and waste management operations are very difficult on islands, uh, especially populated islands. So finding a site we, I appreciate is very difficult, especially one that has these features and also doesn't have currently any residential neighbors, but I do have some questions. <clears throat> So I'm perplexed why you're only asking for an extension to 2028, even though I appreciate that would be to be consistent with another permit that you have that expires in 2028. And yet your estimate of the landfill capacity is to 2042, and you seem to be willing to make investments in permanent structures on a piece of land that you don't have a permit for or not even asking for one for more than eight years. So why don't you ask, why did, why, why are you only asking for an extension to 2028? It doesn't make sense to me. Thank you for the, for the comment, uh, Commissioner. Mark Roy with Minikio Hiraga. I, I'll just respond to the, to the, um, I guess the facts behind the request as to why, why 2028. Um, the the reason for that was to really sync the state permit with the county special permit, which, uh, as you noted, the current expiration deadline is is 2028. I think there is certainly a recognition um, if this project is successful. I mean, the intent is to have uh, waste diverted away from landfill, which is obviously a, a good uh, sustainability measure, and which will further extend the life of the landfill. And so the county further acknowledges, I think, that it, there will need to be a subsequent time extension request processed further down the road to extend the life of the special permit to better mirror the extended life of the landfill, if that makes sense. That, that's, that is what you're saying, but you're inviting a couple of risks. One is that you're risking a sizable investment for permanent structures on a land that's only permitted to be to 2028 by your own request. And secondly, you're taking a risk that you might come back before ourselves and other state agents and county agencies, and you might find you got neighbors in, in those days and a lot more opposition. So I, 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 I just question whether it's uh, strategically a good move to only ask for eight more years when you know that you're not, if you, if you build out the diversion technologies on the new 40 acres, you're gonna get at least to 2042. So I'll just make that point. So in terms of the uh, plans for the 40 acres, and I appreciate to some level of detail, what type of sorting and diversion you'll be doing. But I believe the record is eerily silent on the question of plastics. Is that correct? That's correct. So even though it's not part of the record, can you clarify what the county's uh, best practices are or current practices or plan practices for the for plastics that are waste? Um, Commissioner Giovanni. 
Am I going off the record here? Okay. And so, so the, the options available, just colleagues, the options available to us, if we believe there is insufficient information on the record, yep. the request would be for remand for possibly for remand for further proceedings to make a full record, which would enable us to make a decision. In the matter. Got it. Sorry. So if there's nothing on the record for plastics, then I, then I will take that as the answer. Is that the answer? Okay. Um, is there anything on the record or any that there might be any plans in this 40 acres for any type of waste to energy type technology? There was some mention of waste to energy, but not for these 40 acres. That would be for something else. It was just commentary um, right. notes just in, the, in the record, here, but just not here. for this um, 40 acre expansion. Right, the phrase is used, but it's not. I'm sorry. When Jennifer, we, we can hear you when you're talking in the background, so it makes the record hard to. Jennifer, also, this is a court reporter. Please keep your voice up. Very difficult to hear you. Yeah, maybe start over. So there was commentary in the record about the waste to energy uh, projects and plans, but um, that is not part of the 40 acre expansion land. So what you're saying is if it's in the record that if the county goes forward with any waste of energy, it would not occur on the 40 acres. Correct. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Is there any intention with, on those 40 acres to do any processes involving combustion of waste? No. No. For any waste that would be diverted as part of the, from the sorting operation to off property, was there any consideration in the record for what that impact might be in terms of greenhouse gas emissions if that, those materials eventually were combusted or converted to waste to energy? No, not in the record. Was there any consideration of greenhouse gas at all in the record? Effects of the of the plans to develop the 40 acres? I can have just a moment, please. Sure. Yeah, Commissioner Giovanni, thank you for the question um, on greenhouse gases. The, the answer is there was not a specific assessment provided um, in the record in the environmental assessment for this project. We would, however, note, um, as you recall, I mentioned that this project has been going for about five years. The EA and the, the applications process, we've gone through a number of milestones uh, to date, but um, Commission may recall that the, um, the State Office of Environmental Quality Control very recently um, updated their own rules for preparation of environmental assessment documents. And um, this document actually predates those rules. So it's just a note in terms of the world does change, I guess, you know, through a period of five years. But this, this document was certainly put together you know, in accordance with the rules that guides the preparation of EA documents at that time. Thank you for that. That's well noted. And I might just 
clarify that the state of Hawaii seems to even change faster and more dramatically in this topic than the world. So we have to be concerned about that. Uh, that's all the questions I have, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Giovanni. Um, Commissioner Cabral, you've already had, asked some questions, Chang, Ohigashi, Okuda. Commissioner Axon, did you have anything? No? Um, is it okay, commissioners, if I ask a couple of questions? Um, so I think I heard the testimony just now state that the EA was prepared in accordance with the applicable rules. Is that correct? Was that your testimony just now? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to refer to page 139 of the final environmental assessment, which is section six, significance criteria assessment. Do you have that in front of you by any chance? Yes. Sure. Okay. So the, the first criterion, um, what, what's the first criterion listed? Uh, involves an irrevocable commitment to loss or destruction of any natural or cultural resources. Okay, so our agricultural lands, do they fall within the definition of a natural resource that could be irrevocably committed? Um. Un under the applicable rules governing environmental assessments. I don't have the definition of a natural resource to hand, Chair, but it seems like a reasonable suggestion that um, agricultural land could be considered a resource. I think um, this provision of the rules, I think is, and again, I don't have the definition in, in front of me, but um, is more intended to look toward um, impacts on environmental resources from the use of, of land specifically. So I'm trying to understand whether or not this document, which uh, the County Planning Commission was the accepting entity for this, is that correct? No. Uh, DEM? Chair, it was DEM was the okay. approving entity. So, so, but so DM accepted this as, as complete. This section does not say that these agricultural lands will be irrevocably committed to another use, but yet we actually have now um, on the record from your council that there's no intent to restore them to agricultural use. And in fact, the intent oddly worded as mitigation is to remove their protection as IAL. Have I understood those matters correctly? Yes. In, in that was a yes? In the environmental assessment chair, the, um, the county I think takes the position that there is an acknowledgement that there is um, some degree of, of impact on the availability of agricultural lands um, but given, given the use of a very small acreage compared to the existing acreage of agricultural lands countywide, that it was not deemed to be a significant impact and therefore require um, well, that, mitigation. That's not what first criterion is, correct? The first criterion doesn't say is an acceptable percentage. The first criterion is, is there an irrevocable commitment? Yeah, irrevocable commitment to the loss or destruction of a natural or cultural resource. Yeah, which I, I think it's, to me at least, fairly obvious agricultural lands are a natural resource which the state has prioritized. But I'm just, I just want to be really clear. I'm understanding that the position of DEM while seeking a special permit is to irrevocably change these lands, remove them from IL and irrevocably change them so that they will no longer be used for agricultural um, use. And that is really part and parcel of this request, even though this EA does not actually address that. 
Is that correct? Yeah. I didn't hear the response. Yes. Um, I had another question, which is, are you, you're familiar with the constitutional and statutory provisions that establish um, the important agricultural lands programs? Um, there is a criteria that says that if you are going to remove lands from designation as important agricultural lands, or you're going to urbanize them, it requires a two thirds vote of the approving body. Is that correct? Do I understand that correctly? Sorry, if you're, here, if you're saying something, I don't hear you. I see your head nodding. Yes, I believe so. Okay. But a special permit for approval nominally requires simply a majority vote of a, our board, correct? Correct. So I'm trying to reconcile procedurally in my mind that say you got a majority vote here, but clearly what we're doing is causing this land to no longer be available as IAL. Wouldn't it, to follow at least the spirit of the constitution, require a two thirds vote? So, Mr. Chair, um, you know, you bring up an interesting uh, point. However, I, I would not agree that um, the special permit vote has to be a supermajority vote. I do want to point you, um, the Commission, back to uh, OP's letter of July 1st, 2020. Uh, which they do suggest an alternative method to um, remove the, the IAL designation, which is um, requesting the Land Use Commission to, um, for, requesting for a declaratory order um, that this land is, is no longer um, IAL because uh, of the current use or proposed. Yeah, no, I, I'm familiar. Thank you. I am I have reviewed and I'm familiar with OP's memorandum. I didn't have anything further at this time, commissioners. Commissioner Wong. Chair, um, you know, I I need a if I if you may, um, can we have a recess at this time and let the County of Maui think about some issues that they just requested for the special permit. Maybe they want to look into continuing down this path or maybe withdrawing. So can we take a 10 minute break while they think about this stuff? It's 2.13, we've been going an hour. I'm willing to agree to a 10 minute recess, um, reconvening at 2.23. Thank you. Aloha. We are trying to come back. Um, just confirming, Mr. Morris, you're still with us? Yes, I am. Okay. You know, I made Linda Chow keep her camera on. I'm being very nice. Um, we have Commissioner Wong, myself, Commissioner Cabral, Commissioner Okuda, Commissioner Chang, Giovanni, Ohigashi, and Axon. So we have all of our commissioners with us. Um, Office of Planning. Okay. Um, folks, we're back on the record. It is 224. Um, we are in the portion of having questions for um, the Department of Environmental Management. I will note that we have yet to hear from the Office of Planning. 
as a public witness to hear on their position statement. Um, I certainly underestimated the amount of time that was going to be necessary for this matter today. One of the options, options, excuse me, we have before us is that this is agendized for tomorrow in addition to the adoption of the changes to the Pule Lehua matter. And we could simply um, recess for the day and reconvene tomorrow morning to take this up, or we could spend a little more time on it. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Chair? Commissioner Wong. Yeah, Chair, it, it, um, if you don't mind, I just got a uh, family, some, I have to take care of some family business. So if we don't mind, can we take it up tomorrow? Um, commissioners? To Chair. Mr. Ohigashi, Commissioner Ohigashi. Uh, I have a court hearing tomorrow morning at 8.30, so I will not be back until about 9.30, I think. I will be available from 9.30 on. That's my, my only problem. Okay. Um, well, since Commissioner Wong wants us to leave early, perhaps he can entertain us with Carl Other... okay for the first half hour. Yeah. Um, we can push back the start time till 9.30 if necessary. Commissioners? Uh, Chair, Commissioner I know we Wong. have an, another agenda item for tomorrow. Yes. That's just an adoption. We could move yes. for that one in the beginning and then push this portion after that, correct? Uh, I believe that is not a problem. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, OP, are you okay to go tomorrow when we reconvene on this matter? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. DM? Uh, this is Dan Morris. I'm a little concerned that if we have something agendized for tomorrow that someone who wanted to weigh in on that um, may, may not be prepared or, or uh, given notice that today that matter would be coming up. Is that a type of matter that there might be someone who looks at the agenda and say, I want to weigh in? I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. I'm not sure I understand you, but just to be really clear, this matter that we are discussing was agendized for today and for tomorrow, and there's a separate matter agendized for tomorrow, which we will not take up till tomorrow. Oh, good. Okay. I thought we were considering taking up a matter on tomorrow's agenda this afternoon. Am I no, sir. <laughs> what was being suggested by Commissioner Wong was that at the start of tomorrow's meeting, we would move to take up agenda item um, nine prior to the resumption of agenda item eight to accommodate Commissioner Ohigashi's schedule. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, commissioners, is there anything further, DEM? Does this work? Yes, that works for us. Thank you. Okay, so it's 2.27 p.m. I'm gonna suggest that we go to recess till 9 a.m. tomorrow morning on this, um, as they used to say, say, same bat time, same bat channel, um, back in our Zoom meeting. And we will take up first the matter of docket number AO4751, Maui Land and Pineapple Company, Pule Lehua, to be followed with the resumption of the discussions on this matter, SP97390. If there's nothing further, I will declare us in recess. Is there anything further, Commissioner Giovanni? No. Is the, is the Zoom meeting uh, num uh, call in the same tomorrow? No, it's a different one. You received two invitations from Mr. Hakoda. Use the one dated for tomorrow. So I had difficulty today. They had to, they had to send me a sp the actual numbers rather than just the join button. So can I request that staff send me the appropriate um, meeting so, ID and passwords privately, so I can. Uh, yes, uh, th this this is Riley Hakoda. We will we will honor that request. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Giovanni. Is there anything further, Commissioners? If not, thank you very much to everyone, and we are in recess until 9 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs>